Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Thursday, October 19th. I can't even believe it. So replay crew, everything's going to be time stamped that we're doing today down below so you can always find that. And if you want to make sure you never miss a live stream, lawnardapp.com will make sure you never miss a stream. So go ahead and download lawnardapp.com for free. It'll make sure you never miss a stream. For our live audience today, what we are doing is first, we are going to cover the arraignment for Keefe D, who has been accused of murdering Tupac over 27 years ago in Las Vegas. That arraignment in court will be pretty quick. So we're going to go through the arraignment, um, what happens, if there's any next dates, what we need to do. That's all going to happen first. Then we're going to go to um, everything we know about the Jorn Vandersloot plea, um, the victim impact statements, press conference, his sworn statement. I have a transcript of part of that from the sentencing memorandums. So we're going to cover Natalie Holloway's murder and the Jorn Vandersloot plea, sloot, sloot, what it means, all the rest of it. Um, we're going to cover that second, and then we're going to get to all the updates in the Murdaugh appeal. Is he getting a new trial? What all of this means and what the next steps are. So those are the three topics we're covering today. It's a lot to put into one live stream, but we're law nerds. We can do it. And we've got a press conference and some live court, which we, I always love covering live court. You guys have to let me know, but live court is one of my favorite things to cover. So you never know what's going to happen in court. I'm interested to see what goes on today in this arraignment. So let's roll the intro. I know it is spooky season. You guys, I'm going to start rolling out some of the spooky season decorations. This is the first one in the background here. So you will start to see some things change in the background. Um, my go-to fall attire is Jeff, definitely a hoodie and a hat. So you're going to see a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of that. So today, live court covering yesterday's plea uh, for Jorn Vandersloot related to Natalie Holloway, Murdoch. That's what we're doing. Let's roll the intro. Let's get ready to go right to court in Las Vegas. We're going to have to we're going to have to take several flights today. You guys, I don't know. I feel like at some point I'm going to say this and then it's going to be something I want to do and then it's going to be ridiculously hard to make it happen cuz that's how my life works. But I feel like we need like a law nerd mileage program. <laughs> like we need like air EDB sky miles. <laughs> we need to be able to track them in the app. To how many times we fly. We're we're starting in Las Vegas. And then we're going to go to Alabama on our way to South Carolina. I feel like we need, we need mileage. We, <laughs> we do. We need a rewards program. The team is going to be like, no, no, we don't. No, we don't. What we don't need to do is add a rewards frequent flyer miles program. <laughs> but wouldn't it be funny if we did? All right, let's get this show started. Let me know where you're coming in from, what you're drinking. Today I have a homemade cappuccino. I am so excited. It's finally cool enough for me to drink. So we're going to be, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not caffeinated all the way yet, all the way yet. As long as they're just like Delta and they never expire, that is the only way to do it. It's why I am a loyal, loyal Delta flyer, even though it means I have to fly through the Atlanta airport literally all the time. But it's a good airport. Atlanta's great. And if I ever get stuck, I can just drive home. It's fine. Oh, we binged. Oh, I have to fix the lights. The lights didn't flash. We had it, today's going to be a day. We've had a bing. We we've had all the things. We're going to have to talk about it. So let's roll the intro. We'll celebrate the bing later. We've got things to do. Let's roll. Hey there. I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. Rando from Iowa, I feel like I need to record this in like a, thank you for choosing Law Nerd Air. Please sit with your seat backs and tray tables upright. <laughs> Don't forget to buckle your safety devices. Your flight crew is here for your safety first, comfort second, unless you're a dick. And then none of those things are happening. <laughs> All right. We need to go to Las Vegas 
to watch this arraignment. What we're going to do, I will do a quick road so far for those of you that have not followed this case. It will be a very brief road so far, but first we need to get to Vegas. <laughs> Thank you for flying Law Nerd Air. We are now in the lovely, lovely state of Nevada, going to Las Vegas, where Tupac Shakur was murdered in a car on the Las Vegas Strip over 27 years ago. The defendant, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, wrote a book, uh, Compton Street Legend, where he details and, in fact, starts the book with, the book starts with, it starts with, Suge Knight and I are the only living witnesses to what happened in the murders of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. That's how the book starts. What we know about this defendant from his own words in the book is that he was in the car that shot into Tupac's car when Tupac was killed. He talks about the beef that had happened earlier in the evening and the gang beef that was going on even before everybody went to Vegas for a boxing match. It his book talks about the fact that he talked to the feds. He had a massive um, drug trafficking business and the feds were indicting him on a massive drug trafficking indictment and wanted information and he made a deal with the feds. He outlines that in his book, talking about what he told the feds. I wonder if he thought that his deal with the feds would cover state prosecution. He's not being prosecuted by the feds for murder. He's being prosecuted by the state. Your deals with the feds don't carry over. Murder's illegal wherever you go in the U.S. It's not like we're dealing with nuance of federal crime. This is a homicide case. Murder does not have a statute of limitations. I wonder how much of his book is going to come into this. And I wonder if we're going to see a lawyer coming into court fighting over whether or not the plea deal with the feds somehow impacts this state prosecution. That is the one thing I want to see the most. For those that have followed this case um, at all, it's not a surprise that this who was arrested, this is who was arrested. Everyone else in the vehicle that he was in that shot into Tupac's vehicle is deceased. There's no one left in that car to prosecute. He is being prosecuted, it seems like, on an aiding and abetting theory that he helped. In the book he wrote, who he procured the gun from before they rolled out to go look for Tupac. So after the book came out, then the feds got more search warrants. After those search warrants were served, they went to a grand jury. After the grand jury, they brought back an indictment. So what that means is this will not be set for preliminary hearing. This is going to be an arraignment possibly a detention hearing, and then we'll start the process of getting set for trial because there is not um, there is not a need to do a probable cause hearing because it was indicted by a grand jury. Hopefully that um, reminds everyone that if you are um, writing about crimes you've committed, perhaps don't, or if you're going to, publish it after your death. Just, just, just have it set to publish later. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, Joe Jersey read the whole book in one night. It's not a very long book, but it's illuminating. Um, he also gave an interview to Vlad TV that outlines a lot of what is in the book as well. It's wild. Or will he say it's a work of fiction? I don't think so because he starts the book with, I'm the last witness alive other than Suge Knight who's in prison. Um, we like self-snitching. I mean, self-snitching makes it real easy. I look, I was a prosecutor. People telling on themselves made my job a lot easier, like a lot easier. I had a boss that had a, um, a plaque in their office that said, we don't catch the smart ones as a reminder that there are plenty of people criming that you will never, ever catch. But when they're like, let me tell you what happened that night of the murder when I got the gun and brought it into the car, we're going to end up, we're, it's not unusual that we're going to end up here. Don't taunt law enforcement. It's going to piss them off. And law enforcement was up to some shady ass shit when this was all going down. Some shady ass shit. The, if you have not followed um, the, like the East Coast, it, 
if you're not into gang rivalries um, and you have not followed like the East Coast, West Coast rivalry that also played into the 90s hip hop music scene, it is a fascinating and sad and wild um, exploration of when gangs and legitimate business and illegitimate business all get mixed in together, police being on payroll and all the rest of it. It is wild. Um, Rachel Mills said police thought LAPD did it. The reason police were worried about LAPD is because there were members of LAPD that were working with Suge Knight. It, it's, the corruption is staggering. The, the money that they were dealing with is staggering. It will remind you that people will do quite a lot against their own morals and ethics to have access to money, power, and fame. It's wild. Every, everyone knew what went down. It was whether they had enough to prosecute it. And now they think they do. So, um, Pamela, why couldn't he be put in custody for withholding evidence until he talked? Because he has a Fifth Amendment right to not say a fucking thing. Here's a reminder about the Fifth Amendment. It's one of those things that only works if you use it. Uh, you, to assert your Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination, you have to actively shut the fuck up. It's not easy. It is not easy to shut the fuck up, but you have to actively shut the fuck up and let the lawyers lawyer. All right. Speaking of letting the lawyers lawyer, let's go to court and see what happens today. Um, I'm wondering if we will see the lawyer that Keefe D loves so much that he talked about in his book nonstop. So let's, uh, let's, let's go there. <laughs> EDB, I see you actively love. That's hard. Uh, them being quiet. It is really, it's not easy. It's not easy to just to not say anything, especially it. I am a person who wants to explain myself. I don't know if that's a neurodivergent thing. I don't know if that's an Emily thing. I want to be able to explain myself, especially if I feel like I'm being misunderstood. Um, I want to explain and explain and explain. That doesn't help in lawsuits and criminal prosecutions, whatever. This is me personally. Lawyer Emily sees it differently, but I want to explain. And I see that there are lots of people who are like, no, no, man, you've got it wrong. Let me explain. The problem is when you do that in a formal setting with law enforcement, what you might mean to say and how they're going to interpret what you say are not going to necessarily be the same thing. So you trying to explain yourself is not going to go well. CEG Tuesday, Corey Richens. CEG Tuesday, Corey Richens. Corey's like, let me explain it to you. It's a novel about being in prison in Mexico and celebrating the 4th of July. It's, it's fictional. It's not helping, girl. Not helping at all. All right. Let's uh let's make sure this volume is bumped up. I have turned on closed captioning. I hope that it works. And this is coming from the live court feed from this morning. So let's go there. Um <laughs> Autumn. Yeah, Corey's might not be a book. This one's actually a freaking book, way more than 60 pages. I don't know how many though, because I listened to it on Audible and then bought it on Kindle. So how many actual pages it is, I don't know. It's a construct. All right, let's go to court. Uh, we're not hearing anything yet. The defendant is in custody and has been in custody since the indictment came down. So what we will or should see for the arraignment is the defendant's lawyer coming in, the judge saying, do you understand the charges against you? These are the charges against you. Do you waive reading of the uh, indictment? If they don't read, we'd if they don't waive reading of the indictment, the indictment will get read out. They will set an amount or continue the amount of bail, and then they will set next dates. That should be all that happens this morning. Lawyer, waive reading of the uh, waive reading of the indictment. Don't waive reading of the indictment. These are the charges against you. This is the bail. Moving on. I'm going to speed this up until we have some sound in court. Sound is not on yet, which means the judge is not on the bench yet. So we'll just zoom, zoom. But I always love watching what's happening in court because sometimes you glean uh, interesting information over who's in court, who's talking to, who's in court. This is not an unusual court setup, by the way. There are multiple defendants in court for arraignment. You see lawyers talking to other defendants in the second row. Sometimes they are sat in a jury box, sometimes not, but there are uh, multiple defendants sat in court who are probably like, who are their cameras here for? And QBD is like, for me, yo. They're here for me. So 
Um, that's that's what that's what's happening in court this morning. But you will see other others that are in custody. What is he trying to look at? I don't know. So we're just gonna watch what happens in court, y'all. I'm gonna look at some some questions until we get audio up. Uh, thank you for gifting the membership. I love that StreamYard lets me share those now. It's fantastic. Thank you. Good to see everyone this morning. The people sitting behind KVD are other inmates. Um, let's see. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Katie, happy birthday. Happy 39th birthday. That's exciting. 40s are amazing. Um, you might need to change your moisturizer. That is the one thing I learned. My skin started to change. I was like, I am not prepared. I am not prepared. I was not prepared. Um, yay. I'm glad, Tammy, you were able to make it to a live stream. Uh, what's the tree to the left of the, of our screens? It is a spooky Halloween tree. We're going to start getting some more spooky season decorations. Um, Seattle Law Nerd, so glad you're here. Love your channel. Excited to see what's up with this case. Me too. Me too. I'm in for the Sky Miles, the Law Nerd Miles. You should have an airport takeoff swoop. Maybe. Maybe. I like, I do like the swoop that we have. Law Nerd Mileage Program. <laughs> That's a great name. Great name for the mileage program. Uh, Corey said, love watching your streams. I've been following, have I been following the taking care of my case at all? It's fascinating. It's legally very fascinating. It's factually very sad. Um, it is a lot. It is a lot of a case. But yes, I've been following along with Rob's breakdowns. I know that every now and then Peter will break it down too. So I've been lightly following along. Some of it's very difficult um, testimony, very emotional testimony. And then here's what's really a challenge with the taking care of Maya case, particularly now we get a better sense of the courtroom. Uh, you can see that there's other people in custody in not the jury box, but in the veneer. So when juries are selected where you see people sitting kind of at the, the bottom of the screen down here is where you would have, um, where you would have the veneer sitting before jury selection. And then you will have, um, I've gone to normal playback speed. Hopefully we get volume here in a second. And hopefully we get volume here in a second. So it's annoying that we don't have volume. I'm annoyed that I hear nothing, nothing, nothing. So hopefully we will get volume shortly. I wonder if this is another case. Um, all right, I'm gonna zoom, zoom until we get volume and see at what point in the proceedings we get volume. This is probably a different case uh, that the court is calling. Nope, this is the same case. Why is there no volume? That's annoying. Like none. I hear absolutely nothing. All right. Let me check on my end and see what's going on. <sighs> because what we need is volume. That's really frustrating. All right. Let me refresh. Oh, there we go. That's not a me problem. That's a them problem. All right. Emily, just keep reading. Just keep reading. All right, we will get volume here in a second. It's the feed they cut in too late. They absolutely did. To confirm in two weeks that I'm going to appoint counsel in two weeks because we got to get this case moving. Do you understand? All right, Mr. Goodman, you understand? Thank you, daughter. All right, we'll continue this case for two weeks. That's the idea. Two more members, second to my hand. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, thank thank you. you. They're continuing the case for two weeks. I wonder if his lawyer of choice is not available. So the court feed cut in exactly at the judge saying, we've got to get this case going. We're putting it over for two weeks. That's all. So the case is getting put over for arraignment for two weeks. I will see if there's another feed that cuts in a little bit earlier. Um, but if everybody's using this feed, it's going to be a problem. This is why Emily very much wants her own court feeds. Um... Miguelina, do we have, okay, thank you. Miguelina's looking for another feed. The problem is if there is a pool camera and everybody's grabbing off of that particular feed, then if they cut in the sound too late, there's nothing we can do. But it got put over for two weeks, so we'll be back in two weeks to do this. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna try to take a look at um, any... Any new videos from this morning? Nope. Let's see. My video comes up. That's not what I need. All right, let's try one more time. And see what we can find. There should be... 
Um, there should be somebody else, but if there isn't, there isn't. So I'm going to look real quick. And then if I don't see anything at all and we don't see anything, if that was the only pool feed, then we will go, um, we will, we will, uh, switch to other topics and then maybe come back. But what it sounds like with the judge saying we got to get this case going is that he was not ready for his arraignment today and waived his arraignment. I know he flew all the way to Vegas for nothing and waived his arraignment. And so if that's the case, then that's not very, um, A, that's not very interesting. And B, it's not a surprise. It happens all the time when it's like, hey, uh, my lawyer is not ready, depending on when they hired their attorney. Let's see if this feed is any better um nope this i can't back up all right nope that one is not any better all right so that's so much for the mileage that's what we're gonna do if we see anything else i'll get it but i'm imagining that this is a uh a lawyer situation because they put it over for two weeks all right well i guess that's it I guess that's it. We're uh we're we're done with we're done with Vegas um particularly. So let's see. Um uh, Miguelina, I'll take a look at that. Um let's see. I don't know this channel, but let's let me take a look real quick. Oh, it's that seems to cut in at the right time. All right, we're going to take a look at this uh one other feed and see if we can hear what the lawyers are saying. Thank you Miguelina for grabbing this one. And hopefully we have audio on it because what I really want to know is why they need to put it over for two weeks. But yeah, it takes like a minute. That's not surprising for me for an arraignment. And then we and then we'll board up and we'll we'll go to Alabama. This review journal sponsored by Michael Gaughan, South Point. Confirmation Council. Okay. Amen. And for confirmation of council. Okay. Um, what's your position? We'll submit it to the court. All right, I'm going to give you two weeks, but in two weeks we got to get this case moving. So if they have, Mr. Goodman isn't going to be able to confirm in two weeks, then I'm going to appoint counsel in two weeks because we got to get this case moving. Do you understand? All right, Mr. Goodman, you understand? I do, Your Honor. All right, we'll continue this case for two weeks. What day is November 2nd at 9 a.m. Thank November you. November 2nd, 9 a.m. All right. <laughs> Less than 60 seconds of an arraignment. <laughs> The uh, public defender came in and said, um, we need to put it over for confirmation of counsel, meaning KVD is trying to hire his own attorney or has hired his own attorney, and that's not done yet. Whatever the process is, isn't done yet to retain that attorney. The court said, we're putting this over two weeks to hire an attorney. If you don't have an attorney at that time, I'm appointing you a public defender, and then we're off, and that's it. So... Here's how that's going to likely go on November 2nd. Do you waive reading of the indictment? Yes. Do you understand the charges against you are murder with a gun allegation and a gang allegation? Yes. All right, counsel, let's pick dates. And that's what's going to happen. It is not going to be uh, much of a big deal, which is why we had multiple topics set up for today because I knew that this was not going to be uh, much of a big deal. I didn't think it would be that short. I didn't think... I didn't think we were going to do like, you know, <laughs> less than a minute. That was, that wasn't on my, that wasn't on my uh, list today. That's not what I was expecting. My wasn't expectation my, was uh, not met uh, with that, but I'm going to pop out the chat. We're going to talk about uh, Natalie Holloway and Jorn Vandersloat chat. How does that sound? How does that sound? All right, let's move on. Let's let's just move let's just move on. Um and and do that. So we've got plenty of other things to talk about today. All right. Yes. We basically did, we didn't even have a layover. We had like a turnaround. <laughs> we had a that's exactly right. Leanne said we, that was a touch and go. It, it basically was. Um excuse me, Tower, requesting permission for a flyby. Permission denied, Ghost Rider. We buzzed the tower is basically what happened here. We we just we just buzzed the tower. It was speed court. It was. Let's uh 
let's go to Alabama, shall we? All right. If you have not been following or have not followed or were not um, were not paying attention to these sorts of things in 2005, you might not remember the disappearance of Natalie Holloway. But Natalie Holloway uh, was gosh, 17, 18 years old. Chat, you can remind me. Went to Aruba on like a those high school trips that people do. I never did this sort of thing, but where people go abroad with a big group of people to kind of party at the end of senior year or whatever. Went to Aruba. Um, Jorn Vandersloot was the last person to see her alive. Um, and it had long been believed that he either killed her or was involved in her killing. She was declared dead years after her disappearance. There was extensive searching for her and her remains were not found. Uh, nothing was ever found. Over the years since then, Jorn Vandersloot has talked to media outlets, has given interviews, and at some point extorted Natalie Holloway's mother for over $200,000, saying that he would give her information about where Holloway's remains were um, if she paid him. That is the case he is in federal court on. He is currently in prison in Peru on a separate murder that occurred um, on an anniversary of Natalie Holloway's disappearance. And now we know of Natalie Holloway's murder. It was, it was a, you know, a missing person story that really did grip the nation the way that the Gabby Petito case did minus the social media aspect. It was on every news outlet. It was just absolutely everywhere. People were flying to Aruba to help search for her. It was wild. Her family never gave up looking for answers about what happened to her. And that's where the extortion uh, bit of this came in. So he was then federally charged. I covered this um, on a separate episode, but he was federally charged in 2010 with wire fraud um, with two counts of wire fraud related to the extortion because that was done over the wires. So that was from 2010. He was extradited from Peru to the United States to be prosecuted for this 2010 case earlier in 2023. That case has not had much happen other than to plea. So we are, yes, uh, Tuesday, no, Wednesday, time is a construct. He was in court this week, Wednesday, on the wire fraud case related to extorting a grieving mother for information about her murdered daughter. The rage I have for this case or for this particular behavior is, uh, it, I'm just, I'm not going to even try to downplay it. It, uh, there, it's just, it's so despicable on top of the fact that he knows that he murdered her and is trying to extort her mother for over $200,000. It, it just, it's so, it's just so depraved. It's so despicable. It's so disgusting. Um, and I, like, who the fuck are you that this seems okay? Ugh. Awful. Absolutely awful. McLinda, this is, this is the best summary ever. Thank you. Best summary ever. Thank you. So what we're going to look at today is the sentencing memorandum, the transcript where he details how he killed her. Um, I'm going to let you know before I get into that transcript, if anybody needs like five minutes to like pop out and pop back in, I'm going to give you a heads up on that. And I am also going to go to her the victim impact statements that were written to the court. And then we will go to the family's press conference. This one is emotional, but it also feels like this has closed. Um, this has kind of closed that chapter for the Holloway family. I hope I don't think they need to worry if he's going to make other statements, if he's going to say anything else. 
I I think we're I think we're done um with this case and he's going to serve his 20 years and and that's that's the end of it. And I hope for her family this is able to be the end of it. Chat's like, can we go call it Code Audacity? I don't know if there's ever been a more appropriate time for Code Audacity because seriously, what the fuck? So let me pull up my lights to make sure we can go to Code Audacity and we will we will go full, well, he's already gone full Audacity. So let's go. Ha <laughs> ha! Audacity. Code Audacity. Here we go. Um, let us, I believe, I mean, the fuckery is pretty deep, Octo, I, but the audacity, I think, I think the audacity is higher than the fuckery because who the fuck even, like, who, who does this? How, I, <sighs> audacity. Like, just, yes, audacity. All right. Um, I need to switch which screen is being shared so that we have our documents up and we're going to go to the state's sentencing memorandum and then the sentencing exhibits. So let's take a look at what the state had to say about oh, if my document would behave, behave documents, behave me. I love paper cases because paper always behaves. Also me paper behave, do the things, do the things. All right, this was a sentencing memorandum that was filed and then um, and then made publicly available uh, yesterday. So, the United States of America submits a sentencing memorandum in the above captioned case. Defendant Yorn, all of the things, Vandersloot, pursuant to the binding plea agreement between the parties, the United States hereby recommends defendant receive a sentence of 240 months imprisonment, be ordered to pay 25,100 in restitution as demonstrated herein. The sentence recommended is a just and reasonable sentence befitting the defendant's criminal history and the nature and circumstances of the offenses committed. Remember, he is being sentenced for wire fraud. He is being sentenced for the extortion not for a homicide. And if the homicide was ever going to be prosecuted, it would have to be prosecuted in Aruba. Aruba has a statute of limitations on homicide uh, that I believe at the time was 10 years. I don't know if that has changed since then, but the statute of limitations in Aruba has well passed. He cannot be prosecuted for this murder. It happened in Aruba. He cannot be prosecuted for a crime that happened in Aruba in the United States, even though it happened to a U.S. citizen, there has to be jurisdiction. The U.S. has no jurisdiction over what happened in Aruba, and the time to prosecute that case has passed. So this is just on the wire fraud. Logan, how is there a statute of limitations on murder? I don't know anything about the, the court system in Aruba. Sorry. I do not. I do not. Um... This is also true, Nikki. Aruba did arrest him and let him go like 25 times. Aruba tried very hard to prosecute him and could not prosecute him. Uh, factual and procedural background. From at least 2005 through May 2010, the defendant was a citizen of the Netherlands residing in Aruba. In May 2005, Alabama native Natalie Holloway disappeared while in defendant's company. Her fate and the exact circumstances surrounding her disappearance have been unknown to her family, friends, and law enforcement since May 30, 2005. In March 2010, defendant initiated a scheme to defraud Natalie Holloway's mother, Elizabeth Ann Holloway, by demanding $250,000 in exchange for the location of Holloway's remains and information regarding her death. Believing the defendant's offer to be legitimate and anxious to obtain additional useful information regarding her daughter, because literally who wouldn't? The defendant negotiated a written agreement and pursuant to the terms of the agreement, the victim paid the defendant a total of $10,000 in cash and $15,100 via wire transfer. So the restitution is exactly the amount that was paid as a down payment on the full $250,000. However, the defendant did not deliver on his promises. Instead, he knowingly and intentionally gave false information regarding Holloway. 
uh, information that even the defendant himself later described as worthless. On June 3rd, 2010, the United States obtained a complaint seeking the defendant's arrest for committing the federal offenses of extortion and wire fraud. On June 30th, 2010, a federal grand jury sitting in the Northern District of Alabama initiated the instant case by returning an indictment against defendant, charged the defendant with one count of extortion and one count of wire fraud. The grand jury, I imagine, this is how in my head I imagine that went. I imagine that the grand jury was like, excuse me, is there, what is the charge for, but fuck you though? Like, I know we have wire fraud and extortion, but where is the fuck you charge? How do we also charge that? Where are those charges? Because I imagine that the grand jury would have had all of the feelings that all of y'all are having that I am also having. Uh-oh, this light in my background might be sticking up out of my head and might have to be moved <laughs> at some point. Emily, maybe you should look in the camera when you rearrange your office. Maybe. 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 It's just a picture of a middle finger on the form. Exactly. Exactly. When the when the um grand when the four person of the grand jury signs it, they just sign it, but fuck you. <laughs> Signed, four person, fuck you. Like that. That's how that happens. All right. Let's continue on. Now we know how Emily feels about it. We've always known how I felt about this. In May 2010, prior to the issuance of the federal complaint indictment, the defendant left Aruba and traveled to Peru where he murdered a Peruvian female. On May 30th, 2010, five years after he killed Natalie Holloway. The defendant was arrested in Chile and expelled to Peru to stand trial for the murder of the Peruvian female. In January 2012, the Peruvian court convicted the defendant of murder and sentenced him to 28 years in prison. Also, 28 years in prison seems, I don't know, maybe it's me, but 28 years in prison for a murder feels light? Is that, I mean, it just... Um... Let's see. Following the defendant's Peruvian conviction, the United States, pursuant to the bilateral extradition treaty between the United States and Peru, immediately submitted a request to Peru for the provisional arrest of the defendant with a view towards extradition. In February 2012, the Federal Bureau of Investigation agent John Drew and Assistant U.S. Attorney Michael Wisenat executed uh, before this court in the presence of the United States Mag Magistrate Judge sworn affidavits in support of defendant's extradition from Peru. Um, shortly thereafter, in March 2012, the United States submitted its formal request to Peru for the defendant's extradition. 2012. Pursuant to the extradition treaty, in March 2014, following proceedings in Peru, Peru granted the extradition request, but pursuant to the treaty, deferred the defendant's surrender until the completion of his Peruvian sentence in June 2038. Peru's like, yeah, 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 you can have him. We're not done yet. In 2021, while incarcerated in Peru, the defendant was convicted of trafficking cocaine into his prison. This conviction resulted in an additional sentence of 18 years. How is trafficking cocaine 18 years and murder is 28 years? I, I feel like there's a disparity there. You let me know. Because Peruvian law prohibits prison sentences from exceeding a total of 35 years. Really? Unless given a life sentence, the defendant is currently scheduled to be released from Peru, from prison in Peru on June 10th, 2045. So wait, if if he just kept trafficking cocaine at this point, they can't sentence him anymore? Because you can't be incarcerated for more than 35 years? So you could just like, he's like, well, I'm already like maxed out. Like, might, might as well make some money? Like, I, I don't know how this is an, I have a lot of questions. I don't know how this is an, an incentive, but okay. Sure, that, I mean, okay, sure. Just, I, I don't see the incentive to not crime at that point. Maybe that's me. It's like, well, if I'm already tapped out, what 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 are you going to do to me? Like, at that point, 
maybe that's me being ornery, but it just seems that that would be the thought process there if you're going to continue criming. So defendant is currently scheduled to be released from prison in Peru, June 10th, 2045, 35 years after his original rest in Peru, because that's apparently the maximum amount of time you can hold somebody. So if you commit crime, 35 years is your max, unless you get a life sentence. Why murder is not a life sentence, I have questions about, but whatever. In or around late 2022, due to the ages and health conditions of key witnesses in the United States, the United States decided to invoke a provision in the extradition treaty that provides in, ex in exceptional cases for temporary surrender of a fugitive who is being uh, proceeded against or is serving a sentence in Peru. Accordingly, in January 2023, the United States presented Peru with a request Pursuant to the treaty for the defendant's temporary surrender in May 2023, Peru granted the United States request and agreed to temporarily surrender defendant to the United States for the purpose of allowing the defendant to stand trial on the pending indictment provided that defendant be returned to Peru immediately after the case concludes to complete the remaining term in his Peruvian sentences. So he has to go back to Peru to finish his time there. They're like, you're not going to go serve your time in the U.S. You are going to finish your 35 years here in Peru. The defendant was temporarily, sur temporarily surrendered to the U.S. Um, and brought to the United States, was taken into federal custody June 8th, 2023. They have been trying to bring him into U.S. custody since 2012. It is 2023. On June 9th, the magistrate judge presided over the defendant's arraignment with defendant and his counsel. At that time, the judge ordered defendant be detained pending trial. Defendant has been in federal custody since that time. The United States and the defendant have reached an agreement on the terms of a binding plea. Among other things, the plea provides that the defendant provide truthful and accurate information regarding Natalie Holloway's disappearance in 2005 and the conduct charged in the indictment. The defendant made this proffer on October 3rd. So on October 3rd, he had a very long proffer interview, I would imagine, with law enforcement that would have been video and audio recorded saying, I'll tell you everything. In the plea agreement, the United States agrees to a 240-month sentence for the conduct charged in the indictment to run concurrently with the Peruvian sentences at the same time. So he will serve his 20 years that he ended up getting sentenced to in Peruvian prison at the same time. I also hate that it's concurrent. I get, I get it, y'all. I also hate that it's concurrent. I hate it. I also hate it. Um, there's not much that can be done about that, especially if the family said, I don't really care what you sentence him to. We want the information. Because if that's what the victim's family wants, then the state is going to wiggle on this to get the deal done, to get the information. If the goal for the family, because locking him up is not going to do much anymore anyway, right? So if the goal is to get the information, I can understand why the family just wanted to know and was like, whatever it is, we just, we want, we want the truth finally for fuck's sake. And if that was the family's goal, I can absolutely see the prosecutors being like, fine, if he wants it to run concurrent, it's fine. Like the sentence isn't the goal. Does that make sense? But I understand why concurrent feels ick. Um, I did a quick Instagram reel on this yesterday and some had commented, I thought he had to serve it after his Peruvian prison. That would be consecutively. This is concurrent. It is at the same time. The sentence, and then they go through the sentencing factors um, and, and what the judge legally has to consider in the sentencing guidelines. They go through the sentencing guidelines and what the sentencing guidelines say and and how you interpret the sentencing guidelines. Here, the defendant has a base level offense of nine, an increase of 10 levels for the amount of intended loss, 250,000, an increase of two levels for a vulnerable victim, federal law considering the mother, the grieving mother, a vulnerable victim, a decrease of three levels for acceptance of responsibility. So um, base level offense of nine, increase 10 levels to level 19, increased by two to 21, subtract three for acceptance of responsibility, which gets you back to what, 18? I think offense level 18. If you haven't seen the federal sentencing guidelines, there's like a graph. It's like a fuck around and find out graph of like where the sentence falls 
based on the offense levels. Um, therefore, the offense conduct and offense characteristics yield a total level of 18. Um, the prosecution and defense agree that 18 is the right level. The off probation office calculated the criminal history to be category three, probably because he's been convicted of murder elsewhere. The United States and the defendant agree that that's an appropriate criminal history category. Application of the sentencing guidelines. The recommended sentence is 240 months in prison. Uh, reflects the nature and circumstance of the crime. The amount of money asked for. In addition to being the type of person who would take advantage of a mother who has been searching for her missing child for five years, this defendant in separate incidents murdered two young females. Footnote six. A recorded transcript of the defendant's proffer interview with the FBI on October 3rd, 2023 and victim impact statements from Beth and Dave Holloway are attached. So he's murdered two people. He has extorted a grieving mother. He has trafficked narcotics into a prison and he is going to serve 35 years. Moreover, while serving time in Peru for one of those violent murders, the defendant was convicted of trafficking cocaine. Considering the history and characteristics of de the defendants, of defendant, the United States asserts that an appropriate punishment well exceeds the 31 to 41 month range recommended by the guidelines. So they are asking for this to go well above the guidelines. If the guideline is 31 to 41 months, 240 months is well outside the guidelines um, for wire fraud. Because remember, though he is admitting to this homicide, he is not being prosecuted for it. And sometimes it's hard to keep those things separate. The sentence uh, reflects the seriousness of the offense, uh, offense, promotes the respect for law, provides a just punishment for the offense. Hi, George. Hi, buddy. George is just like Georgian down here. What do you, what do you want? Okay, well, if you, what are you, what are you looking for? Come on. You have to make a choice. You're just like running around on my legs down there. Huh. Okay. George is Georging today. He just, George just wants to cuddle. George just wants to cuddle. My oldest and I left late for school this morning because George just wanted to cuddle with him. And he's like, mom, I'm trapped. I'm like, yeah, you're cat trapped on the couch. You're absolutely cat trapped on the couch. You can't leave. You have a cat on your lap. You can't go anywhere. Obviously, we're going to leave a few minutes later so you can, you can be cat, catted. Okay. Hi. We're talking about Jorn Vandersloot. George, George says he hates you, Jorn Vandersloot. George is not, George is not pleased. Um, back to the prosecution. Those considerations reflect the just desserts concept, which carries the need for retribution, the need to make the punishment fit the crime, and the need not just to punish, but to punish justly. I don't know if I'd like just desserts. I, I, I have questions. A sentence of 240 months imprisonment is admittedly lengthy, yet the impact of the defendant's crimes has been and will continue to be substantial. So they're justifying their ask for a substantial upward departure here the defendant knowingly and intentionally preyed upon every parent's worst nightmare i agree with that the loss of a child by 2010 it was well known that natalie holloway was last seen in the company of defendant but for five years the defendant had repeatedly refused to provide useful or truthful information to anyone regarding her disappearance after five years with ongoing search efforts still having produced no concrete information as to her fate the defendant chose to further exasperate the victim's pain, ignoring the uh, expected emotional impact and harm that his actions would cause. In committing the crimes of extortion and wire fraud, the defendant chose greed over the victim's grief. Under these circumstances, a 240-month term of incarceration is warranted. The court's recognition of the seriousness of the offense would also meet the sentencing goal of general deterrence. A lengthy sentence should be imposed so that others considering preying upon those looking for a glimmer of hope or simply mere closure would consider the possibility of a very lengthy federal prison sentence before they choose to embark on a similar criminal scheme. Specific deterrence is also a consideration. A significant sentence will send an appropriate message that defendant's outrageous conduct for which he has exhibited no remorse will not be condoned. This is the U.S. attorney saying, fuck you. Like, here, here, fuck you. 
Um, the United States understands that the defendant's Peruvian sentence will end in approximately 22 years. Nevertheless, the U.S., the United States submits that a recommended sentence of 240 months on the charge uh, conduct ensures the defendant will serve at least that amount of time, despite any further change in his Peruvian sentences, of which the U.S. has no control. Then they go into restitution. This is a dollar-for-dollar dollar restitution. Based on the foregoing, the United States submits that a sentence of 240 months and 25100 is appropriate. Uh, let's go to the victim impact statements and the defendant's um, the defendant's proffer. We are going to go to the transcript of the defendant's proffer that has been submitted uh, to the court. There are things in this proffer that are difficult. I am going to go through them. Um, it pisses me off, but I also think it needs to be talked about. Like it needs, it needs to be talked about what happened here. And I think that that's fair. So we're, it's also going to come up in the victim impact statements. So we are going to go through the defendant's proffer. It is going to take me a few minutes. It is not easy. It is not easy statements at all. So, um, this is going to deal with sexual assault and murder. If that is tremendously triggering uh give me five minutes and i will see you then all right let's go into the sentencing memorandum <sighs> george i george i cannot be serious when you are when you are george is like we will not be serious we will not be serious here he is he is headbutting me to continue petting him. I have to also move the mouse, George. I'm, I'm, it's not just all about you. All right. Uh, transcript and audio portion of the proffer interview of the defendant. So this was a longer interview and they clipped down the relevant portion of his interview. Uh, from October 3rd, the following is a transcript of a portion of the recorded interview of Jorn Vandersloot. Sloat. This portion is from timestamp 2143 to 2548. JVDS's attorney, Kevin Butler, is interviewing uh, JVDS during this portion. In the event of any discrepancies are perceived between the tape recording and the transcript, the recording is the final authority. Uh, JVDS. Plus, uh, she asked to go back to her hotel, but I was just trying to get dropped off a little bit further away from the hotel so we could uh, walk back to the hotel and I might still get a chance to, to be with her. Attorney, okay. Uh, that's what I was hoping for attorney. Okay. So what happens? I'm going to clean up some of the ums and yas on this. Just, just because it's such hard testimony. Uh, Deepak drops me off at another place, a little right of the Marriott hotel known as the fisherman's huts. This place is not far from, you know, the hotel is the Marriott. And the next hotel after that is another Marriott, which is a timeshare. And then it's the Holiday Inn. So we walk along the beach. All right. Do Deepak and Satish get out? Come with? What happens? No. Deepak and Satish leave. They leave. They go back to their home. I assume they go back to their home. They get in their car and they leave. I'm actually with, I'm actually with Natalie walking along the beach. I find a space before we get to the, before we get to the Marriott Hotel where I lay her down, we lay down in the sand and we start kissing each other. I start, I get her to kiss me again and we start kissing each other and I start feeling her up again and she tells me no. She tells me she doesn't want to and doesn't want me to feel her up. I insist I keep feeling her up either way. Can I share my screen? I'm sorry, chat. <sighs> Fred was fretting. George was Georging. I apologize. There was a, there, that's on me. Apologies. <sighs> um, and she knees me. She ends up kneeing me in the crotch. She said no. He persisted. She knees him in the crotch. I get up on the beach and kick her extremely hard in the face. She is laying down unconscious, probably even dead, but definitely unconscious. I see next to her, there's a huge cinder block lying on the beach. 
when you say cinder block, I'm looking at the walls of this place. Is it like these? They're looking at a picture and he says exact same cinder blocks. I see a huge cinder block laying on the beach and I take it and I smash her head in with it completely. And then he goes on to detail what she looks like that I'm not going to read. He says afterwards, I don't know exactly what, you know, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I decide to take her and put her in the ocean. So I grab her, um, half pull, half walk with her into the ocean. I push her off. I walk up, up to about my knees in the ocean and push her off into the ocean or into the sea. After that, I get out and I walk home. I have questions. Um, I have a lot of questions about this. I don't, I don't think he just dragged her into the waves and put her out in the ocean and she didn't walk back up or wash back up. Um, it just, it's just a very strange way to break this down. It there, I, this is my personal opinion. I think there is still much missing from the story, but this is the first time he has fully admitted that he murdered her and why. I think there are still details her here that don't make sense. And I think there's more. So that's my own opinion. I think there's more to it. Do I think he killed her? Yes. Um, but with the search for her in the water, there are bits of this that I think are not maybe accurate, but what I think doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's, do I doubt the circumstance? No, I don't doubt the circumstance. I don't doubt the circumstance that he, uh, wanted to have more of a sexual encounter than she did. And he was enraged. I don't, I don't doubt that. Some of the other details seem like there's more to the story. Let's go to the victim impact statements from her parents. So this is from her mother, Beth Holloway. These would be submitted to the court and possibly read out loud in court by Beth Holloway and her husband or her or Natalie Holloway's father. I don't know if they are still uh, married. I don't think they are, but it would be read out loud by Beth Holloway and Dave Holloway. And then they gave a press conference and we're going to go to the press conference as well. But first we're going to get to what uh, her family has to say in its entirety because it's federal court and we do not have any um, audio feeds or video feeds out of federal court. You're in for 18 years. You have denied killing my daughter, Natalie. Your lies and manipulation taunting us with fake news, interviews, and wild stories of what happened to her have caused indescribable pain and harm to my family and me. The grief I feel lives way down deep in my soul. Now, in the course of being sentenced for attempting to sell me her bodily remains, you have finally admitted that you, in fact, murdered her. Natalie would be 36 years old now. I think about what kind of doctor she would have become. She would be married, have children, my grandchildren. But you destroyed all of this. You terminated her you terminated her potential, her dreams, her possibilities when you bludgeoned her to death in 2005. You took away my son's big sister. You changed the course of our lives and turned them upside down. You are a murderer. Remember that every time the jail door slams shut, you are a killer. You don't get, you didn't get what you wanted from Natalie, sexual satisfaction, so you brutally killed her. You didn't get what you wanted, so you killed her. I have wondered over the years about the grief your mother has experienced. I have thought about how you destroyed her life, your brothers, your grandmothers, and everyone's around you. And what about your daughter? Chat, yes, he has a daughter. Um, he, I think with his fiance who visits him in prison. Imagine one day you get a call that your daughter has vanished 
and you find out years later that a big bully who forced himself on her didn't get what he wanted, so he violently murdered her. Imagine that. I wondered if the stress you caused your father contributed to his heart attack and sudden death. You were to blame for all of their suffering. You are the one thing no one in Aruba wants to be. The black mark. Extreme emotional loss and pain really can't be comprehended by those who haven't lived a devastating tragedy like ours. I have also suffered great professional and financial loss. When you killed Natalie, I lived in Aruba trying to find her and lost my teaching license and my tenure. I had to go back to school to get my license reinstated and then had to work harder to get my tenure back. Since 2010, when you extorted me and tried to sell me her bodily remains, I incurred attorney and investigative expenses that totaled about $215,000. Your life was pretty much over in 2010 when you extorted me and then killed another young woman in Peru five years to the day after you killed Natalie. Even though you have finally confessed and it has been confirmed that you killed my daughter, you can't be tried here for her murder. I implore this court to give you the maximum sentence for wire fraud and extortion and demand you make financial restitution. Yorin, while you're living your life in prison until you're an old man, I'll live the rest of my life with wonderful memories of a beautiful young lady who had her whole life in front of her. First person victim impact statements are really hard, y'all. Natalie will be 18 forever in my heart. She was smart and so accomplished. I have no doubts that she would have made all her dreams come true. She had real hope. The hope that filled her heart fills mine. And I will wake up every day remembering who she was. I feel like, for me, it is only right and possibly the thing that is most right is to cover the impact for the victims and the victim's family if we are covering what has happened. Um, it is it is always heartbreaking. But what they've been through, I think, needs to be given voice and coverage, not just how someone passed or what was done to them, but how they're being remembered by those that love them. I think it's incredibly important. All right, we're going to do this and then get to the press conference. How her parents read these in court, I do not know. I do not know. All right. This is from her father. Nothing about the last 18 years of being Natalie, Natalie Holloway's father has been what I dreamed for our daughter. We were not able to see Natalie grow into the woman she was poised to become when she was ripped from our lives on May 30th, 2005, during a high school graduation trip with her friends. We never saw her attend the University of Alabama. Where she was set to begin classes in August 2005 on a full scholarship. We never saw her pursue her dream of becoming a doctor. We never saw her dance again. We never saw her celebrate another birthday or Christmas, walk down the aisle as a bride, or rock a newborn. We were robbed of a promising future together with our beautiful, talented Natalie. And we know who took that future from us. The man who will be standing before you for sentencing on October 18th, 2023, who has confessed to murdering our daughter. For almost two decades, this man has deprived us of the basic truth of what happened to Natalie. We know now that he killed her intentionally because she dared to stand up for her own body and defend herself against unwanted sexual advances. Protecting herself enraged an aggressive predator to the point of murder. He murdered Natalie and then tortured and extorted those who love her most. Despite everything that he has done to us, he is not sorry for what he did. He expresses no remorse, regret, or even compassion for committing the horrific crime that violently ended Natalie's life and irreparably changed the trajectory of all of ours. He is evil personified. Having seen and heard him confess, oh God, 
the the family watched the video. Oh, that would be awful. God, that would be terrible. But how could you not? How could you not? Oh, the rage. Just the rage. Having seen and heard him confess to the brutal murder of our daughter, I believe him. We are satisfied that our daughter died at his hands and that he acted alone. Questions will forever remain about the extent to which others participated in depriving us the opportunity to return Natalie's remains to Alabama. Well, um, the knowing, um, Chad is saying they watched it real time. They might've, they might've watched it on a remote feed while he was being interviewed. They might very well have, um, which would be horribly difficult, but knowing that at least her dad has said, and we'll see what her mom says in the press conference, but knowing that her dad has said that they believe what he is telling is truly all that matters. Lisa Parker in the chat asked, where did they find her body? They did not. And they never have. But for the tenacity of the United States Attorney's Office, the FBI, and other federal agencies who relentlessly pursued justice for Natalie, we would not be here today. We are forever grateful for their professionalism, dedication, and perseverance. Please sentence this man to the fullest extent of the law. Today marks some legal accountability. That is very well stated. Because it is only some. But we are convinced that a higher power will pronounce the ultimate judgment on this defendant and anyone else who helped him prevent us from bringing Natalie home. I think some, some accountability is a very, very fair point. I think that there is more to this story. I'm glad to hear that the family believes him. Um, I think it's part of the story. I don't think it's all of the story, if that makes sense. All right, chat, we are going to go to the family's press conference, and then we are going to get to Murdacity. We might just be green for the rest of the day. We might have to go back and see if Murdaugh deserves, quote, audacity today. He might not. All right. Um, let us go to the family's press conference chat. I'm okay. It just, it, it hurt. It hurts my heart. It just, it hurts. It very much hurts my heart. All right. Swoop. Let us go to this press conference with Natalie Holloway's mother. Let me make sure we have all of our volumey things. This I'm pulling from al.com, which is Alabama an Alabama local uh, resource. You know, I like trying to go to local resources when I can. All right. This is the press conference after the sentencing where he was sentenced to the 20 years concurrent. Good morning. Thank you all for being here with us this morning. I can bump My this more. My name is Prima and I'm the United States attorney. All right. I'm so glad. And your hair is fabulous, but I'm going to need to gain this up a little bit more. And hopefully. The Northern District of Alabama. I'm going to make a pr brief prepared statement, and then I believe that Beth Holloway will also be making a statement. Wait, why isn't it playing? That's so weird. Hold on. Chat, let me figure out why the feed I had froze. That's so strange. Um, Today All right, that's better. marks the end of 18 years of wondering what happened to Natalie Holloway. Oh, that's better. Now, Beth and Dave can rest. And Natalie... I don't know why it keeps freezing. That's so frustrating. Oh. All right, give me one second. Why is my screen sharing freezing? Today's going to be a I work 10 hours kind of a day, isn't it? It just it just is. It just is. Can rest. 
knowing that justice was served. For the Holloway family, this has been a journey filled with patience, perseverance, and courage as they continued to seek justice for Natalie. I hope today will give them peace. I want to extend my deepest appreciation to the FBI, the Department of Justice's Office of International Affairs, the governments of Peru, the Netherlands, and Aruba, the United States Marshals Service, and the Shelby County Sheriff's Office for their efforts that helped make today possible. I also want to recognize from my office, Lloyd Peoples, Catherine Crosby, and Tanya Benninger, who worked tirelessly over the last year and a half on this case, along with many others in my office who have worked towards justice for the last 13 years. I saw the question in the chat and I thought it was a really good one. Why isn't locating Natalie part of the deal? Um, I don't I don't know if that is possible at this point. And that's probably why. So I I don't think that is possible at this point. Also, I want to thank the court and the federal public defender and his team for their diligence and professionalism throughout this prosecution. I like that she thanked everyone. Ensuring a successful prosecution took a great amount of collaboration. And I'm grateful for all of the hard work and dedication that has been devoted to this case. The world watched in 2005 as Beth and Dave Holloway experienced every parent's worst nightmare. As a mother, I cannot imagine the heartache, the sleepless nights, and the tears that Beth and her family must have shed of wondering what happened to Natalie. Despite their grief, the Holloway family kept fighting for justice for Natalie. Their love for their daughter and sister is what brought us to this day. For Beth and Dave and Matt, I hope today is not just about this sentence. I hope it's about healing, about finding peace, knowing they did everything they could for their daughter and their sister. I hope today will help all of us move forward not in sadness, but in celebration of the incredible life that Natalie lived. Beth, may her memory be a blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It really, really goes to the strength, fortitude, and perseverance yeah. to finally get a moment in court where you are able to say, you killed my daughter. Well, it's Today, I can tell you with certainty that after 18 years, Natalie's case is solved. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. It's over. Yaron Vandersloot is no longer the suspect in my daughter's murder. He is the killer. In the course of his felony prosecution, here for extortion and wire fraud indictment, he gave a proffer in which he finally confessed that he killed Natalie. He described when and how he killed her. He said that after killing her on he the beach why. in Aruba, he put her into the water, and that was the last that he ever saw her. That was all verified by a comprehensive and conductive conclusive polygraph test. Even with this confession, though, he can't be tried here for Natalie's murder. But I'm satisfied knowing that he did it. He did it alone, and he disposed of her alone. I won't give you the details of his brutal confession. Those will be forthcoming when the proffer is made public. Yep, that we have. You will also have details of the plea agreement which was reached, his sentence of the extortion, and the wire fraud will run concurrently with a sentence in Peru for killing Stephanie Flores. And that's fine with me. I'm Thanks to a lot of that. very smart and dedicated people here. I got the answer I've been searching for for the past 18 years. And that answers a lot of questions. We talked about that when I was going through the plea and the concurrent plea about whether or not this is what the family wanted and this is what the family wanted. So hearing her say, I, I got what I was looking for is really, 
all you can do in this case is hope that Natalie's parents got the answers that they were looking for. And though running it concurrent, all of us were just like, ugh. Um, it's not, I mean, my own frustration aside, if if Natalie Holloway's mom is like, this is what I want, then then that's all that it is. Stephanie S. asks, can't Aruba prosecute him? The statute of limitations has passed. I also think you can see that Beth Holloway looks like she is relieved that her fight for her daughter has finally produced answers that she is satisfied with. And that talks a lot about her journey through grief that she is able to stand there and say, this is the answers that we were looking for. I believe that we have the answers and this is the end for me. In Aruba, yes, the statute of limitations on murder in Aruba has passed. Yaron Vandersloot's confession means we have finally reached the end of our never ending nightmare. And for me, reaching the end of the nightmare, being over is better than closure. It's been 18 years since Natalie and that's what she disappeared, wanted. and Natalie would be 36 years old being today. Being over is better. I still miss her every day. It's been a very long and painful journey, but we finally got the answers we've been searching for for all these years. I'm really we glad to We finally, that. today, we got justice for Natalie. So thank you all so very much and being supportive of us in our long 18 year journey. Thank you. By the way, inside you said, you know, you saw it, said we did it. How do you sleep tonight? As a mother, as what she has today. She's being asked, how do you sleep tonight as a mother? I'm going to get to that answer in just a second. Laura Cox asked, can he be extradited? He has been extradited from Peru to the U.S. for this extortion and wire fraud case. He could be extradited to Aruba, but the statute of limitations in Aruba has passed and he cannot be prosecuted there. So there's nowhere else to extradite him to. The crime, the murder happened in Aruba. That can't be prosecuted. The wire fraud and extortion happened in the U.S. That has been prosecuted. And then he will go back to Peru to serve his sentence. Yeah, I think we sleep, we sleep well. I mean, this has been the most unimaginable journey. And, and I know everyone has been with us on this and, and we are so appreciative of it, but. I need to know what kind of therapy she did because she seems so healed. And I just, I don't know how you maintain that level of strength and composure and being able to not just express rage, which is an emotion I'm very comfortable with, but being able to express gratitude to have the answers and gratitude for the years of work that everyone has done for this. I need, I need to know. I need to know. <sighs> Let's continue on. For us to finally put this to rest and being over, as I said, it's better than closure because our never ending nightmare had to end and we are so grateful that we can say that today that it it's is over. over yeah and that is getting justice for natalie he said, he's, he's a changed man any indication that with the confession there will be charges in a aruba they're asking do you have any indication that with this confession there will be charges in aruba no I don't. I just know that there are no charges that will be here for his murder, but hopefully maybe they will look into that. Do you need that or do you have what you need? No, I have what I need, but um, we're, I have what I need. Did you Her believe what he said that he's a changed man? I definitely don't. I don't believe he's a changed man at all. How did it feel to see him? They asked, do you believe he's a changed man? Um, yeah. Hmm. Oh, it feels victorious. I feel like you finally be, begin to transition from the victim to the victor, and it begins to make the pain and suffering feel 
somewhat less intense because you're you are here you are at this point the pinnacle of the journey and you've gotten justice and you've gotten the answers you've been so desperately seeking so it felt victorious Oh, I'm absolutely confident, yes. She's confident yes. that this is the truth. She had the to talk to Joram in the courtroom. What did you tell him? I was able to. They asked her, you got to talk to Joram in the courtroom. What did you say to him? And technically during a sentence, you are speaking to, you are supposed to be speaking to the judge. However, oftentimes in sentence, there is a little leeway given when people turn to the defendant and are like, you did this you you kill in this case you killed my child so i'm interested to see what she has to say to tell Yaron that i think in this long ending nightmare he was able to express things to him that i had been wanting to tell him as far as you know telling him who he is and he is a killer he is a killer he will always be the killer he will always be now the black mark in aruba He's now confessed to two murders. So I, that was good for me to be able to, to tell him that and you, to share that. Do you hope that Aruba maybe reopen the case? I don't know about He asked, do you hope that Aruba will reopen the case? About that, but I'm just sticking with Victorious right now. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about in the courtroom, they said that you sat as he was explaining what happened. How was that? Because it apparently is trash day, I can't hear what this reporter is asking. It is shocking and it is horrific to hear a killer that describing the brutal. Also, since courthouses are normally in city centers, they're also normally right near the police and fire department, which makes it harder. Things that he did to my daughter, Matt's sister, it's shocking and it is that's natalie's brother with her i did not realize who that was uh with her uh toya asked has he been charged with extortion he has been uh he has pled guilty to extortion and wire fraud and has been sentenced for extortion and wire fraud it's very disturbing but it's things but parents have to know the truth they have to hear the answers as to what happened in order to put this to rest and for it to be over. Beth, did uh, Vandersloot uh, let you guys know if others are involved? Did he act alone? Yes, he acted alone. They believe he acted alone. Thank you all so much. Yeah, tell us about, tell us about Natalie. Tell us about. She's like, thank you all so much. And then one more reporter is like, can we ask, I couldn't, this is why I could never be a journalist or a reporter. When she says, thank you all so much, I'm like, of course, you've been so strong. I just want to give you a hug. And the other reporters are like, I have one more question. I literally could, I literally could never. I literally could never. 18 years before. Natalie was very bright, very smart, dedicated young lady. She was on her way to college. She was headed to medical school after that. And I have no doubt she would have made it all the way. So we love her. We miss her very much. And uh, we wake up every morning with thoughts of Natalie, but now we wake up knowing that we have we have reached justice for Natalie. So hey, she was you. truly the best sister I could have ever asked for. Absolutely. Have you have you said a full and complete goodbye to Natalie at this point? Have you sir, been with her? Sir. Sir. I I feel like it's invasive. Asking her, have you said a full goodbye to her? Stop it. Um, that feels invasive to me. I would, this is a job I couldn't do. Um, I saw another question in the chat about, uh, from Laura. Laura said, she says he's confessed to two murders, any relation to Natalie's case. The other murder is a woman he murdered in Peru that he is serving 28 years for that murder in Peru. That's why he's in prison in Peru is for that murder. They're not connected other than it happened five years to the day of Natalie's uh, murder. So it they're not connected other than but they were murdered on the same day, five years apart by the same man. And I would probably speculate, given the surrounding circumstances, for the same reason. In your own way and let her know. Or same circumstances. It's not a reason. I don't know. I don't really look at it as saying goodbye to Natalie because we wake up every morning and our and the, the hope that filled her 
her life and heart feels ours today. So we feel like we carry Natalie with us even forward now. And that's a good, that's a, that's a very good feeling. It, like I said, it feels victorious, but thank you so much. Yeah. Ma'am, just walk thank away. You. Let her walk thank away. You. Thank you, everybody. Let her walk away. I, I wonder if that is one of the victim witness advocates who's like, are you ready? And is moving her away so that she can be done. And oftentimes you need someone at a press conference to say, let us, let us move you away so that you do not have to continue on answering questions. So that um, is from the alalabama.com uh, YouTube channel where we found that. So you can, if you want to watch it, you can. It answered a lot of the questions I had. Um, more questions remain always. I mean, opinions are, my opinions don't really matter much on it because I, some of the stuff that he said, I'm like, there, I still have questions. However, what matters is that Natalie's family watched him giving this confession, believe him, and are at the end of this journey for them. And that's truly what matters most in any case. So for those of you that asked, and a lot of you have asked why, um, why the concurrent sentence to the time he's serving in Aruba, because it'll be served at the same time as his Aruba sentence. He won't, his sentence in, or, sorry, not Aruba, in um, Peru, his sentence in Peru is not going to get extended because of this case, but we hear it from her. She wanted truthful answers and wanted him to be um, held responsible and wanted there to be some level of responsibility and holding him responsible for extortion is still holding him responsible for his behavior, for his actions, not for the murder per se, but for everything after the murder. Um, well, everything, the actions after the murder where he extorted her mother. So I'm glad to hear her mom being able to say this is the end for me. So this is the end. Um, this is the end of, of the Natalie Holloway disappearance is no longer a disappearance. It is a murder. Uh, the murderer has confessed and is serving time for the murder of another woman. So for any of you that are sobbing at your desk, I'm sorry. Um, so many of us watched this unfold in 2005. It is a very, very long time coming because it has always been speculated that he is the one who killed her, um, that she ended up in the ocean. The amount of time and energy that was spent searching for her and for him to know that and then, and then still reach out to her mom and offer to sell information about her death is awful. It's absolutely awful. So I'm glad they have closure. I'm glad we have closure. And this, on the Natalie Holloway case, um, though we've only covered the extradition and the wire fraud extortion bit, this is still a case closed. So everybody, are you ready? Case closed. I saw Snowstar in the chat say, I am Dutch and sorry for what happened. You do not need to apologize for the actions of one depraved human. It, it, it does not reflect on, on any of your fellow countrymen at all. People, I, I don't know what makes people do the things that they do, but this is seeming to be someone who is a sexually violent predator. And that's where we're at. So that has nothing to do with, with the Dutch. He just happens to be Dutch. So no need, no need at all to apologize um, because the depraved act of one person do not reflect on an entire nation at all. Um, hopefully people view Americans the same way. Thanks. <laughs> we could also, we would also appreciate, we would also appreciate it. No. Um, and I, and I would never, 
And it's the same when we cover other cases. I'm never going to be like, you know, these these actions are the actions generally of just individuals, right? The South Carolinians are not all Murdaws, you know? It's just ugh, so, so sad. Um, all right. Are you ready? So hopefully, hopefully, Snowstar, you know that we love you. And uh, you do not need to apologize. The Arubans don't need to apologize, except for the ones that couldn't solve this case. I would like an apology from them. Um, all right. 20th Century Fox said, I've never seen case closed. Felt good. It feels, hopefully it feels good. I mean, that case, you know what that case needs more? That's what it needs. That's what it needs. Um, Anna, it does, it does, it doesn't feel, I mean, here's the reality with, with murder cases in a lot of cases, but with murder cases, they will resolve, but oftentimes nobody ever feels better. Um, they leave a wake of devastation that is unlike, unlike anything else I've seen. Um, you know, different, different than people who pass naturally, different than people who pass in accidents. When, when loss is connected to violent crime, it is, it's different. Um, and it's a different recovery process and the grief is different and it doesn't ever feel better because it, it, it feels like it wasn't their time, you know? It was the choice of someone else. And it's, that's a hard thing to know that somebody chose this outcome for your loved one or for someone you don't know. Looking at the way people can treat each other is one of the hardest things about being a prosecutor is because as a, as a just human in the world, you see it some, but you are not so familiar with the awful things people can do to each other. Um, when you work in different systems, depending on what they are, and are exposed to the awful things that people do to each other. It's it it's hard, and it it, it changes the way you look at the world around you um, a little bit. Something I wasn't quite wasn't quite prepared for um, because you know we think we know everything in our early twenties, and then you get older and are like shit. Um. So for all of you that work in fields where you are connected to the things that people do to one another. I'm with you and uh, therapy's good and it's, it's hard and it sticks with you, but it sticks with you because you have a heart. And often you want people who have a heart in the professions that are hard. Um, for those of you following the taking care of Maya case, I think you can see what happens when people lose some of that connection. And it's hard to maintain a heart working in a field where people and you are exposed to the awful things that people do to each other um, because it comes at a personal cost. But when you lose that, it's it you're not helping anymore when you lose that uh, compassionate side. So with all of that, I mean, it. how is murder the light fucking topic today? How is that the lightest of our top? How is Murda the lightest of our topics today? What is happening? What 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 world have we slipped into? For Murda, Murda is the light topic. All right, let's just che cheers. Let's let's talk about the murdacity of this man. Let's just let's let's go to something that's not so heavy. Let's talk about appeals. And the judge. Oh. So. <sighs> Deep breath all. Let's. Should we pickle it? I think we should. I think we should pickle it. Oh. Wait. 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 We're going to sidetrack. I have a sidetrack for you. Okay, you guys are going to have to indulge me. We're going to sidetrack for a minute. So first of all, I was on Instagram, as one does, and I posted something in my stories that was someone else. Oh, where did it go? It was somebody else who posted 
Um, if you're ever having a bad day, just remember the Salzburg airport has a counter for people who flew to Austria instead of Australia. Uh, that made me feel tremendously seen. Also, I'm going to tell some stories. We're going to take a, we're going to take a quick cleansing break for a minute. Oh, I see Peter in the chat. Peter, you came in just in time for fuckery. So I don't know if any of you watch gaming streamers. Some of you might, some of you might not. But during these last few nights, one of the things that has been keeping me company where I am, um, good to see you, Peter, when I am going through case prep, is watching Ludwig's streams. And he is playing this Suica game that is a fruit matching game from Japan on the Switch. The amount of energy that it took for me to dive down the entire ass rabbit hole to find this game. To find this game in the Japanese Nintendo store. It is such a great game. It is so much fun. It has like scratched a little place in my ADHD brain, but trying to find out how to purchase the Suica game in the Japanese eShop for Nintendo took me a substantial amount of effort, and I am proud of myself. Because not only did I create a new Nintendo account set to the Japanese Nintendo store, because you, if you have an account in the U.S., you cannot access the game. <laughs> so I created the new account so that I could access the Japanese Nintendo store, and then didn't think about the fact that um, I didn't have a method of payment. This was the part I didn't think through very well. And I'm like, I'll just connect it to like PayPal. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. So then I had to find the online store that will sell Japanese e-credits. I can't share the link. I, I don't know how to share the link. There is no link. You have to, you have, you have to go... You have to, there's articles online, you have to Google, but you have to start a new account for your Switch for the Japanese eShop. And then I found what the chat has shared, Play Asia. The Play Asia website sold me the gift card digitally where I could get the eShop card. So Krista R in the chat was like, Play Asia, yes. Yes. So had to go to the Play Asia store to purchase e shop credits that were Japanese eShop credits. I tried to buy eShop credits in the US uh, digitally and that didn't work. They have to be eShop credits for Japan. Once I got the eShop credits for Japan, then I could download the game. And then, and then I managed to top out my score um, at 3,100. I will just say that Ludwig's best score is like 3,300 minus 3,100. I might have to do a gaming stream because I am so addicted to this game. I have no idea how to connect my Switch to show you on stream, but I really might do it. I really might do a gaming stream. So the way I had to get this game was using my screenshot on my computer and Google Translate. <laughs> it, how long did it take you? A couple of hours. It took me a couple of, it took me a couple of hours and I love it so much. It is such a good game. It is such a good game. So I might do when I have time, a gaming stream. Would that make me a real YouTuber? It might, it might. I might do a gaming chit chat stream just for shits and giggles because I think it would be fun. And I'm obsessed <laughs> with this game. So if I can figure out how to stream it, I might do it. Um, Pamela said, that's an impressive side quest. I went on a full side quest this week. And with the amount of topics that we're covering, um, it, it was a needed, it was a needed side quest, side quest. Holy lime wire. That must be a great game. It's really fun. It's, it's more challenging than you would think. What I really like, um, is the like physics mechanics in the game are really fantastic. So things will kind of bounce and roll and adjust so it takes a bit of time to understand the physics mechanics of the game, but it's also a really fun, it's just a really fun match game. I 
I'm 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 obsessed. So last night as I was prepping, I was watching Ludwig try to get a, a higher score in the chat um, and really being thankful for this chat because this chat has lovely conversations and doesn't just like spam stuff. But he was also he was also like chat. I swear to God, you guys are the worst, um, which was kind of funny. I'm like, I know who the best chat on the Internet is. I do. I do know who the best chat on the Internet is. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> my chat is the best chat on the internet. So chat, you are amazing. Uh, for everyone asking, it's the Suica game. It's ridiculous. It's like 2048 with fruits. It's exactly like 2048 with fruits. It's so good. It's so cute. Um, and I have no idea what the rest of it says. So I love it. All right. I should ask simply. I, sh I think simply does a lot of the game. Does simply do switch games? I should ask. I'll just, I'll ask. Christine. Um, the other thing I wanted to share is something that came in the PO box. I'm going to have to move that light next stream. That lights moved y'all. Uh Oh, can I just run over my audio cable? Yes. This is why we can't do gaming streams. I have, I'm, I'm terrible enough at doing stuff. All right. It's just going to have to be, we're gonna have to let it be. All right, chat. We're going to, um, we're going to move on in just a second, but we needed a, I felt like we all needed to decompress. I needed to decompress. We all needed to decompress. This came in the mail. I have the card in my drawer, uh, well back there that I cannot access. So I apologize. If you sent this, I appreciate you. Uh, it is yodeling pickles, but not this yodeling pickle that has a robe not this yodeling pickle no no oh no 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 it is this yodeling pickle and uh the yodeling pickle will repeat what you say the yodeling pickle will repeat what you say which is wild which is wild and my 15 year old loves it and my 15 year old loves it and makes it say some pretty wild shit. It makes it say some pretty wild shit. I feel like the next time I read a Corey Richens transcript, I need the pickle. I feel like the next time I read a Corey Richens transcript, I need the pickle. And then the pickle can just be Corey. And then the pickle can just be Corey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So the pickle... Uh, just repeats what you say. Other than repeating what I say, which I didn't know it did. Okay, sorry. So the pickle uh, just repeats what you say. Other than repeating what I say, which I didn't know it did. I had no idea. I had no idea. But it also dances. But it also dances. Can we dance? Can we dance? Let's dance. 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 So it's not yodeling specifically. But it dances. I see a lot of you in the chat. Are, I see a lot of you in the chat. Are asking for this. For this. <laughs> That's fucking cursed. Okay, we'll do the other one. That's fucking cursed. Okay, we'll do the other one. <laughs> okay, I've got to be quiet.
Y'all, thank yeah. you. Jen! Jen! Thank you, Jen! Thank you, Jen! The pickle's the best. Pickle's the best. I have to turn it off now or it's going to repeat everything I say for the rest of the stream for all eternity. Turn it off now or it's going to repeat everything I say for the rest of the stream for all eternity. Um, <laughs> so we have a new pickle. Rebecca, is this like the members only chat sessions? Yes. Uh, yeah, but also for the members only, we also have another pickle that, that gets explored sometimes. Uh, Jiggle Wiggle Tickle Pickle also came out at the last members only live stream. So yes, thank you, Jen. It's hilarious. And we all need the laugh. So we appreciate you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. So <sighs> Laughter cleanses all emotion. <laughs> I don't know what you guys liked better. Hold on. What did we like better? I need to do a poll. Miguelina, can we do a poll as to what the chat liked better? Was it the new pickle scream or was it the pickle, pickle on pickle action? Um, and I saw one more. All right. I saw one more. Jesse, rah, rah. Yeah. We, okay. I feel like that's a suggestion that the motion is granted. The motion is granted. Um, yeah, Liz, as you should be. Now playing this week a game in my browser. There are browser versions. They're just not quite as cute, but they're fun. Oh, wait, wait, Pickle, stop. Elaine, your mic. I paused. Elaine, your mic. Elaine, your mic. Your microphone, Elaine. Oh, y'all. Wait, why aren't we dancing? Wait, why aren't we dancing? Where's the dancing? That's why. All right. We got to put the pickle away. Go put the pickle away. Goodbye, pickle. pickle. Say goodbye. So we now have the two versions of the yodeling pickle and the jiggle wiggle tickle pickle. I'm going to become Christine Snaps and there are going to be pickles everywhere the way there are cactuses everywhere. And she's going to be like, what happened? And I'm like, I, I don't know, but I only now drink dirty pickle martinis. Like, I don't know what's happening. We've just gone all of the pickles, all of the pickles. That was the like super extra duty pickle cleanse before we talk about Murdaugh. So that's, uh, that's what was needed. So back to, to back to law <laughs> lawyers, like what the f lawyer, you know, Peter's like, what the fuck has happened on stream? We talked about Natalie Holloway and we read your and Vandersloot's confession and we needed a minute. We weren't okay. We needed to, we needed to redirect our emotion through laughter. So that's, that's exactly what just happened. All righty. We've gone full pickle. That was a full pickle. Like after we got to code audacity, we just, we needed to go full pickle. And now we'll get back to murdacity from audacity from all of the things. So chat, let us go to South Carolina. Uh, hopefully we will take our flight to the right place and show up where we need to be. A brief road so far. Alec Murdaugh was convicted of murdering his son and wife. Alec Murdaugh appealed before the transcript was in. So the reporter for the trial has asked for extensions to get the transcript in. And you can't really start going through the appeal process until the transcript is in because, well, you have to have the court transcript. And if the transcript is not done, then you don't have the transcript yet. So the reporter has filed with the appellate court that they need more time with the transcript. So the appellate briefs aren't done. The notice of appeal was filed, but the appellate briefs aren't done because the transcript's not done. And one, you can't have an appellate brief until you get the transcript. So during that process, Poot et al. were interviewing jurors and investigating what Courthouse Becky might have been doing. Courthouse Becky is the elected clerk of courts. Poot et al. alleged that Courthouse Becky was speaking to jurors and saying things like, don't believe anything the defendant says. And having other private side conversations with jurors during the trial. The prosecution responded to those allegations and said, 
Well, we don't necessarily believe the defense is accurately representing this. We might need to have a hearing on it. What the defense asked for is that the appellate court pause the appeal and stay it until a new um, motion for new trial can be heard based on new evidence. To do that, they're like, we would like to have a hearing on all of these allegations. If these allegations are founded, then these allegations are going to be the basis of a motion for new trial. And if Courthouse Becky was talking to jurors during trial, I don't see how you don't get a new trial. I, I don't see how you don't get a new trial on that. It, it would overpeel, it would overturn the conviction for a new trial. And I can see if the clerk of court is speaking to the jurors, not just like, what would you like for lunch today? Or do you have enough water? Or is the temperature okay? Speaking to the jurors about the case, like, don't be fooled by the defendant. I don't know how you don't get a new trial. Like, I don't know how you don't get a new trial on that. But it's going to have to be proven. And they are asking for a hearing. So the state responded. And we never covered the state's response in full. We are going to. Oh, no, we did cover the state's response in full. The state's response said in some. Because I will CEG last stream where I covered this. Um, it may well be that suspension of the appeal and a remand for an evidentiary hearing will be necessary to properly resolve some of the serious claims raised by appellant in the motion he intends to file. Objective investigation by SLED remains ongoing, but the inquiry has revealed significant factual disputes as to claims in appellant's motion, appellant being Poot et al., if no credible evidence can be found to support the claims brought by appellant, the state will be prepared to argue against the motion before Judge Newman on remand. So what the prosecutors said is, hey, we might need to go back to Judge Newman and have a hearing on these very serious allegations. And they're not fighting that. But they're saying that if there is discrepancies in it, they will fight the motion for new trial in front of Judge Newman. What I did not cover yet was the response from Murdaugh's team to the state saying, we're still investigating, but there are significant discrepancies. So we're going to cover that response now, and then we're going to cover what the court has decided, what that might mean, and then Q&A. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's what we're doing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. All righty. Reply to the state's return to appellant's motion to suspend appeal for leave to file motion for a new trial. That's like a lot of words. It's a lot of words. We, you know, today is the weather is changing. It is not a lip gloss day. Hmm. It is, it is just a lip balm day here. Um, Incidentatile, I think I said that awfully. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is why the chat is the best. So many virtual boundary respecting hugs. I am always here for a hug. I always ask when I run into people when, when we're chatting. I'm like, Do, can we hug? I am very much a hugger. So generally it's a yes. It's a yes for me. So thank you. Hug received. Appellant Richard Alexander Murdaugh replies to the return of the state to his motion to suspend appeal. Bleh. In the motion, Murdaugh alleges Colton County Clerk of Court, Courthouse Becky, sorry, Rebecca Hill, engaged in deliberate jury tampering for money and publicity. The amount of like shit where the allegation is like it's for clout that we've covered lately is it's so like it's so much. It's basically a but this was for clout, though. That is the allegation here. But it's for clout. Oi. Oi. In the motion, Murdaugh alleges that Courthouse Becky engaged in deliberate jury tampering for money and publicity. If those claims are not true, Becky Hill is going to need to sue. I don't think she can. Uh, this team, because, you know, these are all allegations made during... Uh, Litigation. I don't know if the press conference, I don't think the press conference falls outside of that, but it's going to take time for 
Becky Hill to clear her name after these massive allegations if they are proven to not be true. Murdaugh included several affidavits and exhibits to the motion to show the very serious allegations were not mere speculation, but have sworn evidentiary support. The state has unfortunately chosen to respond in bad faith to serious allegations. The state wants an extension from this court so that it can conduct its objective investigation free from oversight and deadlines set by a trial court while denying Murdaugh any ability to participate in the process. But the state would be too embarrassed to directly ask an appellee court uh, sorry, appellate court to retain jurisdiction over a factual dispute instead of remanding it to a trial court that can receive evidence based only on its desire to conduct unsupervised factual discovery. So the state intends, uh, the state invents a preposterous procedural requirement to obtain the court's permission to file a motion for new trial in the trial court. Murdoch must provide the court an affidavit stating that as he sat in the courtroom during his murder trial, he was unaware that the cork of court's jury tampering. There is no such requirement. So this is a procedural requirement that they were fighting over. The requirement in Rule 29 of the rules uh, to seek leave from the appellate court to file a motion for a new trial when there is a pleading, or sorry, when there is a pending appeal exists to allow an appellate court to manage its docket. For example, where a prima facie case for a new trial cannot be made, where a new trial would be unwarranted, even if the movement's factual allegations are true, remand would be a waste of time and effort. Yep. So I went through that sentence kind of fast, but what they're saying is there is not this, the state is stretching to make there be this factual first hurdle that doesn't exist. And they're like, look, when a new trial is never going to be the result, no matter what they say. So if you come into court at the appellate level and say, you know, allegation A, B, C, and D, and if the result if A, B, C, and D are true, and the result is not a new trial, then there's no point to remand it back to the lower court to evaluate claims A, B, C, and D, because the result of those claims is never going to be a new trial. But here, they are presenting sworn affidavits and allegations that if they are true, I think can warrant a new trial, and probably should. Mm -hmm. So that's their argument. Look, if this shit's true, a new trial is warranted. So it's not a waste of time to send it back down to the lower court. Even if a prima facie case is made, it might be undesirable to suspend an appeal that has already been briefed and argued to allow a new proceeding to be initiated. But this is not the case. Briefing has not begun because the trial transcripts have not yet been produced. I don't always agree with Poot and company, but they're absolutely right. Suspending the appeal at this point literally hurts no one. The court clerk is not done with the transcripts yet and needs more time anyway. So it doesn't really matter if it gets suspended at this point. No work has been lost. No time has been lost. Nothing has yet happened in this appeal. Accurate. There is no reason not to suspend the appeal that has not yet begun. I agree. An affidavit from a juror to the clerk of court told jurors not to believe the defendant when he testified in his own defense is by itself sufficient to establish a prima facie case for new trial. I don't disagree. If that is true, it's a real, 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 real big problem. And if that is true, I don't see how you do anything other than grant a new trial. You have to grant a new trial. It's absolutely unacceptable. And then perhaps pursue criminal charges. It's so outside the bounds of okay. <sighs> um, and then they cite State versus Cameron, holding where there was a private communication of the court official to members of the jury, an occurrence which cannot be tolerated if the sanctity of the jury system is to be maintained. A new trial must be granted unless it clearly appears that the subject matter of the communication was harmless and could not affect the verdict. Harmless communication with the jurors. Do you need me to stamp your parking validation? Oh, you need you need to be late because you're going to the doctor? Okay, can you just send us the information? Those communications happen and are harmless. What are you having for lunch today? Hey, I like your shoes, which shouldn't be happening. Like that one shouldn't be happening. You shouldn't be complimenting jurors. But if a juror is like, oh my God, I love your cup. Where did you get it? And you answer, 
that's a communication that shouldn't happen, but it's probably harmless. Telling the jurors not to believe the defendant is not harmless. I think what the state will probably argue is, but what if they didn't believe her? I mean, it might not have impacted their jury verdict. And the only thing you can do is ask them, did this change your mind? And again, these are still allegations, which is why I'm trying to be very mindful of saying, if this is true, the hard thing for me is there are three affidavits, but we don't know the circumstantial affidavits. Uh, we don't know the circumstances of the affidavits. And I think there just has to be a hearing. And that's what the court's ultimately going to do. But let's keep going. <laughs> After citing cases from the 19th century for no apparent purpose other than to apply that the witnesses who do not say what the state would prefer are Mr. Murdoch's confederates who tend to perjury, the state proceeds to state the legal standard for obtaining a new trial based on after-discovered evidence and that the standard is remand and that the standard for remand is a prima facie case for new trial. <laughs> They're trying to shade the state for citing old cases. Um, I think they were just making a dig at Poot's age. They probably weren't. Those are probably the only cases they could find, but it would be funnier if it is. But Poot's just like, Ugh. like, do we have to go back to the 1900s? Sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. And sometimes we see them going all the way back to the Magna Carta, CEG Idaho. The state then identifies certain elements. Identif this sentence is awkward as fuck. You can't be shady and then have awkward sentences. There is this lovely plugin called Grammarly. It will work with most programs. It will help fix the fucking awkwardness of some of these sentences. The state then identifies certain elements identified in the legal standard to obtain a new trial that are not relevant to the motion because they are not disputable on the facts of this case and then claims the failure to establish those elements by affidavit submitted by the appellant is a procedural defect in the motion. Ugh. The state identifies two such purported procedural defects. First, the state claims a motion for leave to suspend an appeal so that the motion for new trial may be filed requires an affidavit from Mr. Murdaugh. The attorney general knows this is untrue. Footnote one. That's what I wanted to know. The attorney general claims in the return that this purported procedural defect prevents him from consenting to the motion, which he would otherwise do. If he really believed that, rather than mullishly seeking delay for delay's sake, he would have mentioned his concern the day before the return was filed when Mr. Murdoch, his lawyers, the deputy attorney general, the senior assistant deputy attorney general, uh, Creighton Waters, were all present before Judge Newman in a Beaufort County courtroom. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the undersigned obtained an affidavit from Mr. Murdoch stating the obvious that he did not know of the clerk of court's improper communication with the jury until after the trial concluded the affidavit is attached as Exhibit A. Fine. Uh, in support, the state relies exclusively on out-of-context cherry-picked quotes from State versus DeAngelis, a 52-year-old case that has never been cited for that proposition. I mean, no age shaming. Sometimes old cases are still relevant. DeAngelis affirmed a trial court's denial of a motion for a new trial in which the defendant sought a new trial as a device to challenge his own guilt plea that occurred after a jury was impaneled but before trial commenced. That's a much different situation. His motion for a new trial was supported only by two affidavits from other persons criminally involved in the crimes for which he was accused and one from his own attorney. The trial court determined that, among other issues, the affidavit was at least needed from the defendant given that he was challenging his own decision to plead guilty and then denied the motion. In 52 years, it's been 84 years, in 52 years, the fact-specific decision in DeAngelis has never been cited by any court for the proposition that a motion for new trial always requires an affidavit from the defendant. They're like, excuse me, that's not what the fuck that says, but they're going to do it anyway. Let's go to the next proposition. The state also, I mean, it's well taken if nobody's ever cited it for that reason. It's a well taken argument. The state also claims Mr. Murdaugh's motion for leave to file a motion for new trial is defective because it does not indicate how or when he learned of the allegations. Again, the attorney general knows this is not true. The how 
is that the jurors and other witnesses spoke to Mr. Murdoch's counsel after trial, the when is on or about the dates in the affidavits. Well, the problem with that is that when Poot was giving interviews and when, uh, when the other one was giving interviews, Poot and, and Griffin were giving interviews, there was some disagreement as to whether or not they knew during trial, right at the end of trial, if they knew how long um, that happened. There was some disagreement, I think. If the attorney general wishes to argue a new trial should not be granted because Murdon knew the jury tampering during trial or because he could have learned about it during trial through due diligence, he must make a fact-based argument in the trial court in the first instance. But it's highly unlikely the attorney general would make such an absurd argument in front of the television cameras in a courtroom. He suggests it now on paper only for the purpose of delay. Um, excuse me, your honor. He like wouldn't say that on TV. So like he's saying it now because he just wants to delay, but like make him say it on camera. Finally, the state asserts that if Mr. Murdoch's allegations are not supported by its own investigation, it would consent to remand. It no, that's not what they said. The state asserted that if Murdoch's allegations are not supported by its investigation, it won't consent to remand, not will consent to remand. Of course, the state's investigation supports the allegations. If the state's investigation supports the allegations, it would be obligated to consent not only to remand, but to a new trial facts. So the state concedes that there's no circumstance in which it will not consent to remand. This starkly exposes the dilatory purpose of the state's return. Jim. We have to use dilatory in our filing today. Barber, make it happen. The state admits it does not actually oppose the brief sought or the relief sought, but first wants Murdoch to spend weeks jumping through preposterous procedural hoops invented only for him. Um... Where a return is frivolous or taken solely for the purpose of delay, the appellate court may of its own motion of a party impose upon offending attorneys or parties such sanctions as the circumstance of the case and disgorgement, a discouragement of like conduct in the future may require. The court should disregard the state's bad faith procedural defect arguments, deem the state's response a consent to the motion, and expeditiously grant it. Let's see Exhibit A. Affidavit of Richard... Alexander Murdaugh, I, Dick Murdaugh, after being duly sworn, depose, and state that I did not have any knowledge uh, or information that the Colton County Clerk of Court, Rebecca Hill, or anyone else had communications with the jury during the trial in the above captioned matter about the evidence, jury deliberations, or other matters identified in the proposed motion for new trial as filed as an exhibit in the Court of Appeals until after the jury rendered its verdict and I was sentenced. For their affiant saith not. I need every state in the union to have their aff affirmation say, for their affiant saith not. I, all of them, all, all of them. I need every state. Like, can we just universally adopt that as uh, the swear and affirmation? That. I need it to be that. It's so good. Uh, and then he signs it. I need it. I need it. It sounds like a binding spell, right? Right? I need, I need further affiant saith not to be a universal standard. This is why I love covering cases from all across the country because there are quirks that are different. This does not happen in California at all. I have never seen this anywhere else. Or something similarly fancy, fancy Latin works. Um, saith not, I need on a t-shirt. Quoteth the raven, nevermore. Luann said, gives me the same vibes as you shall not pass. None shall pass. I love it so I love it so much. Um 
Hedgehog in Space says, we have good words here. Remember the cloak of righteousness? The way I fucking loved the cloak of righteousness. I loved, I loved the cloak of righteousness. You take the cloak of righteousness with you on your missions to go be like, say it not. <laughs> Lindsay, you're not wrong. Lindsay, say it not is just legal. Say less. <laughs> Don't tell Gen Z that they're throwing it back, not, not to the 1990s, but all the way back to the early 1900s. <laughs> Legalese is fun, yo. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> they really said share it with the class. They did. They did indeed. Um, so that's the end of of Murdaugh's uh Murdaugh's affirmation, affidavit. He saith not. Um, God, I love that so much. All right, let's go to the court's ruling, shall we? This was filed October 17th. We touched on it briefly on Tuesday, but I also wanted to have as we do, I wanted to have the uh, the court documents. So, let's see. In England, our legislation starts with the Lord's spiritual and temp temporal. I, I, I'm here for it. I'm here for all of it. Um, there was something else that caught my eye. So where did it go? <laughs> I'm going to use that in my husband. I'm going to use that... I think with my husband, the next time we disagree, I say, if not, I'm done. I am done. I am done. All right. Let us, let us continue. The South Carolina court of appeals order order in this court. Appellant filed a motion to hold this appeal in abeyance and remand to the circuit court to allow him to file a motion for new trial pursuant to Rule 29B of the South Carolina Rules of Criminal Procedure. Respondent filed a return. The appellant filed a reply after careful consideration. We grant appellant's motion. This appeal shall be held in abeyance until resolution of the Rule 29B motion. Appellant shall provide this court with status updates every 30 days. Failure to file status updates may result in dismissal of the appeal. We're going, going back, back to Judge Newman. Going, going back, back, Judge Newman, Newman. So we're going back to Judge Newman. I need to see this entire thing play out. I am so deeply invested in what the fuck is happening. If, if this is true, what the fuck? But also, if this is bullshit, what the fuck? Like, both options are bad. There's no good option here. There's no good option here. And I... Lainey, this is a brilliant suggestion. There's no good option here. If it's bullshit, it sucks. If it's true, it sucks. Like, if it's bullshit, it sucks. Th there's, ba there's bad options. All bad all bad so i don't know yo i guess we're gonna see but um if there's fuckery here it's going to be a big 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 huge problem uh with big huge consequences and i'm not sure that we're uh not in the like twisty bobcat pretzel of the whole thing. I think there's going to be more twists and turns to this. This this one, I'm just like, there's something, there's, it. this doesn't make sense. Like it just doesn't make sense. Like either the corruption is so bad at this courthouse that the clerk of court, what, the clerk of court was just like, what do you mean you can't tell the jurors like not to believe somebody? And that is beyond the bounds of like credulity or there are people who were just like, oh yeah, Becky was totally talking to everybody. But then there's that book. Fuck. Do I have to read Becky's book too? All right. We're going to end the, uh, the poll. Cause I need to know if I need it. the poll is 50, 50, which do you like better pickle on pickle or the pickle scream? Oh, we're now 49 to 51. Let's end the pickle poll. Because I need to know if I need to read Becky's book. I've got a lot of reading assignments. I need to read Becky's book. I'm going to need to read Brittany's book. 
Like there's lots of books to read. We were, you guys were basically 50-50 the entire time on which did you like better. So fair enough. Both need to stay in the rotation. So this is going to, uh, this is going to go back to Judge Newman. We will see if Poot tries to put it out to hopefully wait out Judge Newman's retirement. I'm interested to see what the court does with this because Murdoch's going back to trial with Judge Newman in like a month. I'm going to cover it. Y'all, this is this is a lot of a mess. Like, this is a lot of a mess. My cat's name is Karen. Was her book published for real, for real? Uh, she self-published it, but I consider that for real, for real publishing. Not Becky's book so badly written, but I feel like I need the tea, though. I feel like I need the tea. I need to break, like... 3,500 on this, the Suica game, but I also need the tea in this book. So, um, but only if you borrow it and not contribute additional money. That's very fair. Um, Airy Deary, Air Deary. I hope I got that right. What about switching the four man? Becky wanted it. The judge made it happen. It seems that that was the case. It was very odd. The switching four person did not sit well with me. It was very strange, but the judge is like, it's my practice that I picked the four person. It was very odd. It was very odd. So, I don't know. I might need the context. Hey, I read Compton Street Legend. I might just need the context. Put it on Audible. I could do that. If it's on Audible. I don't know if it is. Um, might not, might not, might, might not be worth having it shipped. Might just need to get it. All right. That is the end of all of the case coverage. We need to go to questions because I've got questions. You've got questions. We might need a law nerd book club. I'll let you know what I decide. We might need a law nerd book club. I'm definitely reading Brittany's book. Um, I could do it on Kindle. I'm definitely going to read Brittany's book. Um, and then we might have to have those conversations in our members only stream. If you want to know when we're doing all of those things, I will just remind you to download the law nerd app Y'all, we are, we are um, like almost 20,000, I think, strong in the Law Nerd app. So if you want to join us, it's been fantastic. Go ahead and join us. Also, remember, if you want 15% off at the Law Nerd shop, that discount code is in the app for app users only. Octo, bring in the big guns. My birthday is 1021. Gift idea. Sign up for the Law Nerd app and help me hit my goal. Octo has a goal of how many Law Nerds he would like to see in the app and is not going to feel okay until it happens. Is not going to be okay until it happens. I know that the Britney book will be on Audible. And I think I pre-ordered it. The day that the book was announced, I was on stream and y'all told me, and I think I went and pre-ordered it when it was announced. So I, I think I have it. So, all righty. Becky's book excerpts read with the voice changer. Maybe, maybe. Or with the pickle. All righty, yo. Let us get to questions. I've got questions. You've got questions. We've got questions. We also need to celebrate a bing because it binged. It's been a minute which happens when we're not doing live trial coverage. So I think it's time to celebrate the growth of the Law Nerd community. So for those of you that are newer, you might not have seen this yet, but the the sub counter back there makes an audible bing and the lights used to flash and then I fucked up all of my lights and so they don't at the moment and I've got to fix them. But I was busy trying to figure out how to start a, a Japanese Switch account. So I haven't done that. <laughs> so I haven't done that yet. But this is... This is it binged. Oh, it binged. Move your head. Ah! I also have to blow my nose. So give me 30 seconds.
I actually remembered to mute. Also, the um, the it binged move your head was from when the channel hit a hundred thousand subscribers. I know a lot of you were here when the channel hit that milestone. Doctor B was here, but I couldn't see the I couldn't see the counter. Hence the move your head. So, do you guys like the mystery tree back here? We got the the spooky tree and a little bit of a gravestone. I we're gonna put some more. I've got some more spooky stuff that's gonna get put into the uh, put into here. All right, Octo's asking, what of the new merch do you have? I mean, Mega Mug is my favorite. We have Mega Mug. We have Mega Mug. We might need one. We might need one that says "Sayeth not till coffee," uh, which was a fantastic suggestion because it's absolutely hilarious. So let's get to all of your questions, serious and not. I love the tree. I stole it from our uh, elsewhere in the house. I was like, we need it. Oh, we're definitely doing more spooky. Definitely doing more spooky. I love it. I just have not had a moment. And then this weekend is like, hey, there's band and then there's band and then there's band and then there's band. So, you know, if you live in Middle Tennessee, you might see me at a snack bar or a band competition. Are you going to Charlotte or Charleston? It depends on the day. <laughs> Um, it depends on the day. Chrissy, thank you for covering these cases. Of course, it's been heavy. We need we need some more housewives nonsense. I can't BravoCon is gonna be like the the like reset for how many heavy cases we're covering for sure. Uh Charlene, good to see you. Thanks for the hours and hours of education, entertainment, and laughs. You're the best. Thank you, Charlene. You are also the best. Um, Midnight said took a day off for my birthday and get to be here live midnight happy birthday i am a big fan of taking your birthday off sometimes you just don't need to deal with other people's bullshit on your birthday can i just read books and tell prosecutors who to go after that would be my ideal job <laughs> judy you got this i love that i i have often said like the one thing that would bring me back into court um the one thing that i would be like yeah yeah, put me in coach would be if I got to work like the housewives division of the U.S. Attorney's Office. <sighs> Excuse me. I think there's criming. Um, ideal job. No, this is actually my ideal job. I didn't realize it for many, many years that what I really wanted most in life was to just be a broadcaster and a lawyer. And now I get to do both. Now I get to do both. Murdaugh, I need to buy We Live Here merch. Music to my soul. You do need We Live Here Now merch. With the Murdoch case, we have moved in. And with Mega Mug, there's room to do so. So, absolutely. Um, we've also got the Bring the Jury Mug. We do need the... We have not released the Bring the Coffee version. But we do need to release a Bring the Coffee version. Version. Jeez. Brain. Um, love being able to catch a live. Fantastic. I love having you guys here on the lives. Love seeing everybody in their member chats. It's so much fun. I love that YouTube does that. I think that YouTube has done a really good job of trying to find ways to honor uh, the channel members. So I am so here for this EDB. I absolutely remember when Tupac was shot. Same. It was so terrible and can't believe it is now allegedly solved. I think it's solved. It's now being prosecuted. And I think that's a huge, huge deal. I think everyone has known who was in that car for a while. Um, and you get 15% off in the app. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Jules, y'all are very smart anyway. I hope I just give you the language to express it well sometimes. Um, for sure. I saw that Moselle is back on the market. I wonder why. <laughs> you got me a Japanese account. Look, it was easy to it was easy to set up. It was easy to set up. Can we get a bring the tea version too? Matilda, that's a great idea. Somebody write it down. Team, we also need a bring the tea version. Because bring the tea has so many implications. <laughs> I could absolutely see a bring the tea version of bring the jury. Uh, absolutely can. So you're in rarer form today and I'm living. I'm tired and I, I'm, I'm tired and I'm honestly so pissed off. Like I'm so pissed off over the Vandersloot stuff. I just can't. I just can't. I can't recover myself. It there's like a level of rage and sadness. So it's, it's wild. Uh, don't talk yourself into jail. 
or do. I mean, it makes it it makes it easier for prosecutors. Like if you if you really want to like if you really want to make a prosecutor's day, just look at Corey Richens, send a walk the dog letter, talk about it with your family on the phone, let them be able to use it as a confession or consciousness of guilt. Write an entire book being like, I'm the only living eyewitness to this. And by the way, I procured a gun that day and brought it into the car and we went to go find Tupac. And, you know, he he says in his book, Keefe D says in his book that they were hired or they would have been paid uh, by Puffy to kill Tupac. Just put it all in the book. Just put it all in the book. Put it all in the book. Sure. Love Swoops, shout out to you in the latest doc. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. CEG Suica game, but I will go check it out. I, I think Swoop is great. Morning did some lawn nerd shopping in the app. Whoop, whoop. Good job, Jen. Love it. Haven't been here for eight plus months. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back. Hope everything is well. This channel is always like a when, when we're here. I'm here when you are. I need to move that light. Next stream. Next stream, that light will be somewhere else. So much happened yesterday. I was thinking, is EDB flying? <laughs> EDB was just really busy yesterday. And then I was like, damn it. So much. So much. Um, no more chauffeur. My 20-year-old passed the road test. Congratulations, Katie. That is a big deal. Sitting here at the EDB Sky Club enjoying a little drink. Oh, yes. We love champs in the EDB Sky Club. Champs and snacks. Good snacks. Nothing like coping with the flu with my hot apple cider and lemon while traveling with EDB and the lawn nerds. Makes it more entertaining. Feel better, Jim. Um, and Lori and whoever is ill feel well or write a book like OJ did. I mean, or write an, if I did it, I think we talked a little bit about the taking care of Maya trial. Um, but yes, I've been watching along with it a little bit. It's a very sad case. I think I said this earlier, um, with the taking care of Maya case, the thing that is very difficult about that case, because it is a very emotional a very emotional fact scenario. It gets hard to look at both sides of the case because the hospital will have a defense and there are legally very interesting, very interesting areas of law to talk about, but it can feel cold to talk about the ins and outs of can a hospital be held responsible for someone's decision to take their life in the context of all of the things that were done to Maya while she was in the hospital. It's difficult to talk about the like, gray zone of the law side while the fact side is so awful but the jury might just be like we don't care we don't care here's all the money like we just here's all the money just take the money even if the law is unclear the law is very legally difficult and very legally interesting the fact pattern is so hard that for me it's hard to navigate the law side of it because the facts are so devastating um, arraignment speed run. I think we won under a minute for the arraignment speed run. Uh, we just had a Vegas layover. We definitely had a Vegas flyby. I saw some of you in the chat asking about my hoodie. I don't have a link to it. I just bought it. It is, uh, Abercrombie and Fitch. It is cozy. It is whatever they're like athleisure. Why be why PB line? But I love the, um, I love the weight of their hoodies. I love that they are just a neutral hoodie i liked the color of this one and i love that i get a like you know jedi style oh my in ears are gonna kill me but it's got like a jedi style hood which in tennessee you never know when you're gonna get out of the car to drizzle so it helps um leanne k said i was a senior in 05 i remember it well i i would imagine i would imagine so um the ultimate quick bit the quickest of the quick bits ever uh, Elizabeth said there is no way to know if his new story is the truth or if he's, uh, getting off on jerking her family around again. I don't know. They said they believe him and that's fine. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. My new facts, not fuckery hoodie arrived today. Only five days after I ordered it here in the UK. I'm so happy with it. Yay. I'm happy to hear it. Uh, it's why we work with the distribution we work with though. There sometimes can be quirks. There is lots, um, there are lots of locations where they ship from to make things a bit easier. Not everything ships from the U.S. Some of it is made in um, the U.K. Off topic, but I wanted to thank you for encouraging Rob to keep covering Maya Friday. His coverage is so helpful and important. You're a great friend. Thank you. Brandy Rose, I didn't know that he had talked about it, but of course, um, of absolutely, of course. So, um, 
Lissa said, so is other sentences concurrent? This is going to Vandersloot. So Vandersloot's sentence for murder in Peru was 28 years. Then he got sentenced for bringing uh, or trafficking cocaine into the prison. And that caps out at 35 years. His U.S. sentence is 20 years, and it's going to be served at the same time in Peru as his Peruvian sentence. So he has... 22 plus more years, whatever, on his Peruvian sentence. So he'll serve the 20 years from the U.S. at the same time. Uh, Lizzie, thank you for the gifted memberships. I love being able to welcome new law nerds into the community, and it's a great way to support them. So thank you so much while you support the channel. Um, Lissa said, I guess he has still done quite, he still has quite a bit to go on his current sentence. Also, will he be kicked out of Peru once he's done? I don't know. I would imagine they would extradite him once he's done, but I don't know. Um, Casey Katz said Peruvian prisons are hell holes, giant cages filled with hundreds of men. Uh, I have no idea, but uh, yeah, I, d I don't know much. So we'll see. He killed the daughter of a very wealthy Peruvian. Uh, he, he is. Yep. Does he just deserts? It's a, it's an, it's an odd turn of phrase in that. Uh, I sentenced Vandersnoot for 64 bappings from Fred and George. I mean, Yep. In the middle of all of this, uh, Vandersloot has fathered a daughter of his own. Yes, from uh, while he has been in custody. He has a fiancé and or wife um, that he has visits with in custody. Tian said, for sensitive topics, it might be worth having a splash note on the screen to allow people to mute and come back. Uh, we put them in the comments, so it is in the chat comments. We pin exactly what I'm talking about up there, and it's it's faster to swap out without blocking out any of the documents. Beth Holloway is one of the strongest women. She never gave up her fight for Natalie. This is a win, but the loss is so much greater. It, Tracy, I think that is very well taken. Debbie said the picture of the block being in the room, the picture of the block being in the room gave me major uh, Kaiser Soze vibes. I don't know what I can believe his account. And I don't know what pictures they had in, in the interview room, if they had pictures of the location, but his attorney would have known what he was going to say. So he could have been prepared for that. Um, thank you for reading it out loud. I know it's tough. It is tough, but it's a little, we all got to talk about it together. And just for those wondering, yeah, we did talk about that a couple times today. It's sad. Uh, Redondo beach. I love Redondo Beach. Um, you've inspired me to go to law school. Congratulations. And it is an adventure and a journey and a joy. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes it is just challenging and you cry. But that's the law school experience. Rebecca J said, I would have loved to work with you as an ADA. My crimes against children cases have stayed with me 20 plus years. You never forget the families. Rebecca J, you don't ever forget the families. It's one thing when you meet people that work in the criminal system, there's this automatic like default of having a conversation. It's like, oh, we can just go there. Hi. <laughs> Other people don't want to hear our conversation. Hi. Um, and so thank you for the work that you did. But yes, crimes against children. And I never worked a special crimes against children unit for all the reasons. But I have many friends that did. Uh, Casey Cat, I agree with you. I, I, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Just dragging somebody out into the ocean and being like, yeah, it's fine. Is, uh, it's tough for me. It's tough for me, but her family satisfied agree. And that's all that matters. If her family is satisfied, then my questions remaining, the point, the point has been made. Um, let's see. Ash Axiom says over 10,000 people currently viewing the AF hoodie online. It's now sold out in all but two sizes. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, y'all. We're going to have to start linking these things like in the app and I can. Um, well, there's, there are a lot of us here on stream. <laughs> the second murder was because she looked up information on him and Natalie. <sighs> uh, have you looked at the other Corey Richens cases that aren't her criminal ones? Yes, but we have not gotten back to them. It's been about a month and a half. Um, have the new pickle imitate the other pickle. It was a well-taken point. I think, uh, everyone very much enjoyed it. Nights you say I have, I have that as a cactus. <laughs> it should also have a press button to record messages for it to replay. Oh, that's what this other button is. It does right there. 
So we could do that too. We could we could make it our Elaine your mic pickle. Um, what you do on stream today, EDB? Um, well, it, we were all over the place, weren't we? Motion to expand EDB Airlines to include EDB tele, uh, teleportation. I think teleportation works really well for when the fuckery requires immediate travel. Yes, it is just like whew, we're just going to uh, port ourselves from place to place. Um. My mom's getting 100 stocking. My dad will kill me. That's a per that's the perfect kind of a gift. Oh, I might need to send some to my nephews. <laughs> so we had talking monkeys one year and gave all the family members one. They had them all talking and repeating each other. It had us rolling. Um, can you see us? I can just see you doing that with the pickles. Yes. Yes, they're a delight. I love the pickle goat scream. I need it. I need that loop. It's pretty funny. Um... Jay said if he had been acquitted and these allegations were made to his benefit, would a new trial be an option given double jeopardy? No. No, it would not be. If he was acquitted, it would have been done. So, um, gifted, thank you so much. Uh, Garcia May Macy, thank you for the gifted memberships. Could jurors felt forced by the clerk's action? Absolutely could happen. Absolutely could happen. I think it's why we need to have a hearing on this. I think that's the most, I think that's the only right result is to have a hearing. Um, Music to My Soul said, Manny Matney, Eric, Bland, et cetera, don't seem to believe the allegations about the clerk, but I'm not sure why other than distrusting AM and his lawyers. I don't have any, any insight on that at all. There are sworn affidavits. That is, is something that has to be considered. Oh my God, just got here. Great to have you here. Um, I think the control of yourself mug comes in the mega mug. There should be a drop down menu for it. Teddies, you are absolutely welcome. Off to pick up grand puppy catching the rest of replay. Fantastic. Motion for bring the law nerds merch. I will consider it and see if we can find a fun design. The yodeling pickle break had me dying. I think we all needed it. We all needed a moment. Have you heard about Jada Smith's Tupac was my soulmate toward. I don't know what in the world is happening with Jada Smith. I've been following it with um I've been following it with a grams I a grams with accounts I follow on Instagram. But I have no idea, no idea what's what's going on with all that. Is there a book coming or something? I need an exhibity mug or t-shirt. We need to put it on the list. We do need exhibity merch. I've missed a few lives because of law school. <laughs> law school does that. But the chat feels like home. Love being back. Ashley, law school is very busy, but the chat is always here for you. Love the new merch. Thank you. Um, thank you, Shanique. Floyd, it's good to see you. Murda, uh, Ari Murda, if Becky did tamper, could that affect other trials she was involved in? It should. There should be an there should be a more of an investigation. Normally, I don't know how like a, uh, let's see, it would be like a public integrity type of an investigation that would need to happen either by SLED, but if SLED's involved in those cases, you might need to bring in federal uh, investigation for that. Our case at Hard Week, there was a fatal seventh grader bike car accident at the kiddos middle school. I'm so sorry, RK, that's absolutely devastating. Um, and I'm sure your community is just shaken. Um, hug your babies, be alert, driving, biking. School zones are are a tough one. Um, I need the Lawnard University on a hoodie. We're working on getting it to um, print well. We've had some printing not well. So we're that is something that we are working on because quality comes first when we roll things out. Uh, yes, Jada has a new book. Uh, can't wait to get my sweatshirt. Any new info on Mars versus crew? Not for this week, but there will be in the future. Um, they are trying to push it to arbitration. So I need to check back and see if it has gotten pushed all the way to arbitration. Do I need to read Becky's book? 65% of you said yes. So I guess I have a new assignment. I think I need the context. I'll get it on audible. I mean, I'm in the middle of re-listening to a series, but I'll get it on audible while I'm playing match games <laughs> while I'm playing match games Taz I'm so glad you spent your break in the chat here with us 
I want Hocus Pocus style purple hair merch. I think we're a little a little late for that um, for this Halloween, but I will consider it. I will consider it. We uh, we need like an intake form. So it's wild. It's just wild. So thank you all. Will you be doing a spooky Halloween stream in costume? Probably not in costume, but I will be streaming on Halloween. Um, and maybe we will have to look at some cases that kind of fit the the theme a little bit because we will have to be talking about we'll have to be talking about it. So or or we will make it a fun stream in some way and maybe not cover anything too heavy and just I don't know, see if there's any trademark disputes over Monster Mash or something. We'll see. We'll see. Um Michelle in the chat said off topic, but which, you know, sometimes grabs my attention. The Delphi defense attorneys just quit. Well, that's going to delay the case, isn't it? Isn't it? I don't know. I will be in theme. I don't know if I will be in costume. I have a very, very cute witch's hat, though, that I can wear. So we'll do it. We're definitely doing a Halloween stream. It is on Tuesday. And I need to just see what is going on at the kiddos' schools for what time I will do that. Audible pays very little to the author. And in this case, I'm, I'm glad. Well, then we can, we can do it that way. Um, Nisa, I haven't gotten to dive deep enough into it to know, but we will go see. So that is, it's wild. So we'll have to go look at what's going on with, um, with that as well. It's, we've been covering so much that there has not been time to add Delphi in, but it is on the list. So is Lisk. Like there are a couple other criminal cases that are going to get swooped in. It's not mostly going to happen in November because November is going to be a very uh, odd schedule. It's um, it's BravoCon. It's some other travel. So November is going to be a bit up and down for me. So with all of it, all right, let me, let me check real quick about the Delphi lawyers because now I'm seeing lots of questions in the chat. Uh, so I'm just going to pull that up real quick and see this is 18 minutes ago from every news organization you can imagine. Richard Allen's legal team quits. Uh, let's just pull this up real quick. Me, I don't cover breaking news. Also me. Well, now I'm invested. <laughs> uh, let's take a peek real quick at that's my notes. Not what I was trying to pull up. Um, let's switch that. My notes, all of my links for the stream, which the the members have seen when I talked about how I organize for stream. Let's see. Also not it. There we go. From Fox 55 Fort Wayne, special judge Fran Gull announced that Richard Allen's attorneys are no longer going to represent Allen. Um, Gull made the surprising announcement during a status hearing Tuesday afternoon. So it looks like there was just a status hearing today. This comes after documents filed before the hearing suggest Allen's team would plead their case in front of the judge. The hearing was slated to begin at 2 p.m. Instead, started at 2.29. The short hearing concluded at 2.33. Allen did not appear in the courtroom and has been sent back to the correctional facility. The story is developing. Well, well, well. That will be very interesting to see. So with all of that chat... It's been a lovely one. If you want to stay in the loop, you need the Lawnard app. Um, next week, we are going to be covering uh, cases that I haven't gotten to get back to yet. We're going to be kind of trying to swoop everything in, and then it's going to be Halloween and travel. So the Law Nerd app is where you need to be to stay in the loop with everything I have going on, especially if I'm going to be doing some behind the scenes, which I always end up doing from BravoCon. Those will be announced in the app. Not all of those will be on YouTube. And we'll go from there. All right. Law nerds, thank you. I appreciate you. I'm going to go get some lunch and, and maybe play a little bit of a fruit match game. <laughs> it's surprisingly difficult. It's a surprisingly difficult game and it's lots of fun. So chat, thank you for being the best. You are absolutely incredible. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend. And I will see you soon. Bye. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. 
You can also follow me around social media. And don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a law nerd.